I know you've been a very successful coach in this state. What do you see in these kids that makes you think that you'll be able to ride, lift them to the level of a state championship? Yeah, right now we're, we're really kind of still adapting. Like we're still not probably where we need to be as a team at this point in the season. Um, but the kids have adapted very well and um, to a new system, new mm -hmm. offense, new defense. So they've adapted well, but we're, we're a little behind. Like We need to kind of catch it up, and hopefully tonight we, we take a huge step to do that. Okay. Thank you very much, Coach, and I know that you will get the job done. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. It. Thank you. Coach, you had a highly successful year last year. What in your kids do you see that might be able to get them to that level again this year? Well, I think they're, they're trying to find their spots. You know, we had a lot of senior leadership last year, and um, the, the guys this year, they saw how they played last year, and it's just a matter of, uh, 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 finding their identity. I think we're still looking for that the first couple of seasons or first couple of weeks, and uh, I think we're getting there right now. All right. I mean, you've already had some success in the season, and we're still very early in the season. Do you believe that your kids, once they mature, have a chance to be conference champions? Absolutely. One thing we talk about uh, every day is getting better each day, and we've gotten better each week. You know, we've we've done a really good job uh, run, uh, running the ball. We've got a better job tackling. It's just it's going to take to gain a little bit of more time with these guys because it's they're a lot of new new young guys. So just a matter of getting ready to go here. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank and you. And good luck this evening. I appreciate it. Good evening and welcome into Grays Lake, Illinois, where tonight it's the battle of Grays Lake as Grays Lake North takes on Grays Lake Central. Hi everybody and welcome into Iserman Stadium on the campus of Grays Lake Central High School alongside the former Northwestern Wildcat Terry Harrell. I'm Connor Klingen and Terry, a rivalry game tonight. Both of these teams come in at one and two. How could a win in this rivalry turn the tide of the season? The good thing about that one and two, only one of those games have been conference games. So the team that steps up today and plays a good game and gets a victory today can move forward and maybe win this conference. Well, these were two very successful teams last year. Both made it to the playoffs. Both won a game in the postseason as well. But for Grays Lake Central, they lost their starting quarterback, Cole Gillette, a two-year starter, went down. He's going to be done for the season. And Brady Carlson has to step up, making his first start tonight. How do you adjust making your first start as a young player? Well, the good thing and the bad thing about that is Brady Carlson was able to step up in the second half last week. He was able to lead his team to a victory, and today he can take that as confidence and move forward. He's going to have a couple butterflies in the beginning, but he should be ready to go. It's going to be a tough challenge for the junior quarterback for Grays Lake Central. Well, Terry, these two teams both looking to get a big win tonight. And for Grays Lake North, they're coming off that 9-2 and two season last year. Grays Lake Central 7-4 and four last year. What do you see as some of the keys to tonight's game? The important thing is that both of these coaches have a new atmosphere. They have a new team, and they have to impose what they want to do offensively and defensively. In Coach Johnson's case, he has a bunch of young kids. In Coach Perlman's case, he's a new coach in a new area, but he's a very experienced coach. So I expect this to be a very entertaining game. Two newer head coaches looking for a massive victory earlier in the season. It's the Battle of Grays Lake. Grays Lake Central taking on Grays Lake North. And kickoff is coming up next on the CAC Network.
beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner by the Grays Lake Central Marching Band. And we're just about ready for football. Terry Harrell and Connor Klingon with you. And Terry, as we mentioned in the open, this should be a really fun matchup. A 10-point game last year and a really important game in terms of the momentum of the season for both of these teams. Yes, it's a, it's a game early enough in the season that both of these teams still have a chance to win their conference. And these teams should be fairly well matched. Both of them were very good last year, but they lost some talent. But both of these coaches are working to develop the young men that are there, and they'll be ready to go tonight and be competitive the rest of the season. To take a look at the Grays Lake North sideline, this was a team that last year in head coach Brian Johnson's first season, what do they do? They just went 9-2, and two, and they won the NLCC conference. But right now, they find themselves 1-2 and two and 0-1 oh and in conference play. When you talk to Coach Johnson, what did you sense about how he's feeling about his team early in the season? He feels that his team is young. However, he does he's very positive about them developing. He does believe that they'll be able to get to the level that they will be excelling as well as they did at the end of last year. There's a look at the student section for Grays Lake Central fired up. Seems to be a patriotic theme tonight at Iserman Stadium and a great crowd, a great rivalry. We were just hearing before the game, it's only about a three minute drive from Grays Lake North here to Grays Lake Central. And the crowd on both sides is loud. The crowd, they're here to support their teams and they're very excited. This is a great night for football. A little nip in the air, we're ready to go. Now it's perfect football weather. Temperatures in the 60s, clear skies. Sun is set, lights are on for Thursday night football at Iserman Stadium. You can't tell it's a Thursday night. It's a fired up atmosphere. They are fired up. Thursday night, Friday night, the lights are on. It is Illinois high school football. And Grace Lake Central will get the ball to start the ball game. It is Colton Ohm back deep for Grays Lake Central. Alongside Eric Brum. And now they're gonna switch sides. So Terry, have you ever seen that happen? Well, it does happen. It does happen sometimes. Not <laughs> only do the players get excited, but the referees get excited as well. <laughs> So what do you say we try this again? <laughs> Christopher Von Briesen getting ready to kick off for Grays Lake North. The Knights in their road uniforms, the black helmets, the gold numbering. It's a nice look, almost reminiscent of the Purdue Boilermakers. Very much so, very much so. Meanwhile, Grays Lake Central in their home green with the helmets that look quite a bit like the LA Rams and Von Briesen ready to kick off. And we are underway in the battle for Grays Lake. And that's a pretty good kickoff taken inside the five yard line. And a nice move to cut it upfield past the 25 and a pretty solid return by Zyle Martinez for Grays Lake Central. A very good return. The ball is on approximately the 30 yard line. And so they have good field position to start this first possession. So we'll see Grays Lake Central on offense. As we mentioned in the pregame, a new starting quarterback, Brady Carlson. He did play the second half last week, but there have to be some nerves right now for him. Yes, I expect him to respond very well to the situation, though. Grays Lake Central opening up with four wide receivers. They do like to spread it out. And we'll see what Carlson does in his first start. He sends Eric Brum in motion across the formation. He's going to throw on the first play over the middle, tipped and nearly intercepted by Carter Berenbaum. Well, well, Carlson had time, and he had a couple receivers that he could have thrown to. It looked like he was focused on uh, Brom in the beginning, so he might want to look at his options before he releases the ball. And that is huge for Grays Lake North to have Carter Berenbaum back in the lineup, three-year starter at safety, the leader of this defense at the back end. He's committed to Division II Minnesota State. 
And last week he was in street close, but he's back at the back end of this defense. So second and 10 now for the Rams. Carlson gives for Romeo Reyes and he is swallowed up immediately. Brought down at the line of scrimmage. They did a fantastic job on the run. Uh, Romeo Reyes is a very speedy back. And so sometimes he can cause, cause a defender to miss and get yards where there are none, but not that time. Only five foot three. Romeo Reyes, but as you said, Terry, plenty of speed. Third and 10 for the Rams on their opening possession, trying to avoid a three and out. Four wide receivers spread out across the formation. Carlson fakes for Reyes. Looking downfield, he's got a man who makes the catch for the first down, Eric Brum. Terry, what a, a catch. A very nice pass, and he had to take a hit. And he took the hit, held on to the ball, and now they're successful. Now he can move forward. So first and 10 for the Rams. Eric Brum, the junior, making the catch to move the chains. And so far, head coach Brent Perlman not afraid to let the new starter air it out. This time Carlson will give for Reyes on the right side, shifting his way, and he is picking up seven yards near the 50-yard line. Well, I expect we'll see a lot of that from Reyes today. He is a very shifty runner, and Coach Perlman, I have a little bit of history with Coach Perlman, he likes to run the ball if he can. And a timeout taken by Grays Lake Central in the early going of this game. Rams calling timeout. Well, Terry, you have to like what you've seen from the young quarterback, just not afraid to let it rip. Well, the, the, the best thing for him is that his offensive line is playing extremely well. He's not had to take any hurried step. He's not had to step sideways to avoid anyone because he's getting plenty of time in the pocket. So if he's going to have that kind of time, he should be successful. It is a veteran offensive line. For Grays Lake Central, led by the likes of Sean McGrath. And they have given Carlson plenty of time. But second and three here, the playbook is really wide open for the Rams. This gives them the opportunity to hopefully de deceive the defense. Maybe a play action pass, or maybe because the defense has to get some pressure, maybe they could try something like a screen or a draw at this point. Meanwhile, for Grays Lake North, they're hoping to try to get some pressure going with that defensive, defensive line. See Christopher Baswena on the right side of it. The man in the middle, Owen Rush, the nose guard. Second and three for Central. Carlson fakes, he's gonna keep it himself. He's got the first down and stretches out for a little bit more. That was a, a very nice run by Carlson. He sidestepped the defender at the line of scrimmage and was able to pick up the adequate yardage for the first down. So they've picked up a couple of first downs. First drive at home as a starter for Brady Carlson. Of course, he did play the second half in the win over North Chicago. That was a game that was switched here to Grace Lake Central. It was initially supposed to be at North Chicago. So another first down for the Rams. Carlson fakes, he has time, and he gets it over to the right side, caught for a first down, and there is Colton Ohm taking it past the chains and out of bounds for another first down. One thing that Carlson has shown is he's extremely accurate when he has time. So in order to upset that, somewhere in here, Grays Lake North is going to have to present some pressure. But Carlson has had all day back there. He looks poised in the pocket, not flustered at all. 6'1", 175 pound junior. He's got Reyes with him in the backfield. 
Sends Ohm in motion, and he'll hand off for Reyes. Reyes working that left side, shifting his way, spinning out to the 25-yard line. A couple of yards short of the first down. Yeah, excellent run. Excellent run. They're right on schedule. They have the ability at this point to do anything, run or pass. And so it's very difficult if you can't force a team to do one thing to stop them. Clock is stopped here. And now it's running. <laughs> Second and two for the Rams. Carlson making sure his offensive line is set. Makes the handoff, looking to that right side and completes another pass near the 15 yard line. And once again, it's Colton Ohm. This is something we're gonna see a lot of today unless they get some pressure on Brady Carlson. This might be his first start, but this is definitely not his first rodeo. No question about it. As he gets the play in from the sideline, head coach Brent Perlman calling in the signals. Coach Perlman, also the quarterback's coach for the Rams, so he's certainly played a hand in developing Carlson to be ready for this moment. It's first and 10 from the 17-yard line of Grays Lake North as the Rams look to strike first. They send Brum in motion. And whistles and a flag. Looks like this could be motion. Delay of, game. Delay of game, the call there, and really the first true mistake for the young quarterback. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the way they run their offense, they never get in a huddle. So they have a lot of time to get a playoff from the time they get to the line of scrimmage. And so that's, that was a mistake that probably should not have been made. It could have been just a communication mistake between the quarterback and the sideline. First time we've really seen the Rams behind the chains on this drive, first and 15. A fake for Reyes, throw over to that right side, and once again, it's Colton Ohm. And I'm noticing, Terry, it's a lot of crossing routes to Ohm on that right side. Well, what that gives you is, at this point, because he's been very accurate, they have to give him space. And if they have to give the receiver space, if they just break off the route, either go inside or outside, he should be open, and their timing is on. Second and six from the 13 yard line for the Rams. Carlson gives her Reyes, shifting his way, but he's swallowed up pretty quickly by the defensive line for Grays Lake North. A big play for that line who really hasn't gotten much of a push on this opening drive. You're right. They haven't gotten much of a push, but they give Reyes the ball to keep everything off balance. And if you can keep the defensive line guessing whether it's going to be a pass or it's going to be a run, you slow a pass rush. At this point, they might look into blitzing. They might have to send an extra rusher in order to get some pressure on Carlson. It could be Eli Woyad uh, lining up on the left side of that formation. You can see him there, number four for Grays Lake North. Wouldn't be surprised to see them send him here on third down and six. Carlson, look at that right side, pressure. under pressure, throws over the middle, wide open, touchdown Rams. Bryce Carlson, he throws his first touchdown pass of the night to his younger brother. That's going to be a fun dinner table tonight. The simple fact that you can let a pass go and your younger brother catches it, that makes everybody at the, at the house happy. Bryce Carlson, just a sophomore, and what a moment for him. Can you imagine catching that touchdown pass from your brother? Uh, hey, you got to be excited. You got to be excited, and they have more than half the season to go. So hopefully they can do it again and again. And Marcus Heizer nails the extra point. It's 7-0, Grays Lake Central. 
with 7.35 to go in this first quarter. And what a drive by the young quarterback, Brady Carlson, just picking apart the defense for Grays Lake North. It was a fantastic drive, and it does show that they had a lot of talent there on the bench. And he stepped up. He was prepared to go, obviously having a lot of confidence this evening. Now what we're looking at is, excuse me, does Grays Lake North have the ability to answer? So what, what is their offense going to look like this evening? And so this is really important. If they come out with confidence and they're able to at least get a few first downs, this will tell us if this game is going to be even the rest of the way. So hopefully we're looking forward to a good game. So we're looking forward to, Saint, to excuse me, Grays Lake North. Well, that's the kind of matchup we expect, maybe back and forth on both of these teams have had instances this season where they've struggled scoring. But, Terry, we talked about it before the game. Both these teams took on some tough challenges in non-conference play to prepare themselves. And at least in the case of Grays Lake Central, they seem ready to go tonight. Yes, very much so ready to go tonight. But I do believe that Grays Lake North will answer. Maybe not a touchdown, but they should answer with a strong drive. And if they do, this game is still in play. And we'll get to see the Grays Lake North quarterback, Mitchell Hughes, for the first time tonight. He's also a first-year starter. But in his case, now tonight, he's making his fourth start of the season in comparison to Carlson making his first career start. And so he has a little more season, seasoning this year, and we do expect him to respond well. This isn't the first time he's taken the ball when they're behind, and so he should be prepared to go. He's here to kick. Don Polian will let it go out of bounds, and a mistake for the Rams that kick off out of bounds. That'll give Grays Lake North good field position to start. Well, as of right now, it looks like they're setting up at the 25, but. Looked to me like that kickoff went out of bounds. Yeah. So I think they just need to mark off the penalty here. Yeah. Might be a discussion. There we go. Now they got it. <laughs> there you go. So Grays Lake North will start at their own 35-yard line. Good field position, but the Knights find themselves in a hole. And you see the starting quarterback, Mitchell Hughes. Dominique Polium, the lone back behind him. They give to Polium, working the right side. Breaks a tackle, but he is still brought down in the backfield. A couple of players there. Looked like Matty Jens was in in the action. Maybe just one there for Polium, and he's a player that Grays Lake North likes to get the ball in a lot of different situations. Over 500 all-purpose yards last year. They like to run it. They like to throw it to him, and they're going to try to feed him a lot tonight. Yeah, he should see. He should see several touches tonight. His his first run, although there was a lot of defense there, he showed that he's quite nifty in avoiding the avoiding a tackler. Hughes to pass for the first time and a little bit short, maybe some miscommunication there with Christian Phylus, who was the wide receiver on the far side. It looked like that could have been a sight read. There are, there are patterns that they run based upon what the receiver sees and what the quarterback sees. They can either go long, they can break it off to the outside or the inside, depending on where the defense is. And because that throw would seem to be so far off, that could have been a sight read. And sometimes that happens. And it's not unusual. You just don't want it to happen too often <laughs> because it puts you well behind the chains. Yeah, especially on a second and nine. So third and nine for the Knights. Hughes looking to the far side, rolls out right, fires, and incomplete. Was looking for Eli Woyat. Couple of players in coverage, but Sean Mullen making the big play defensively. I, the difference between the two offenses right now is not necessarily the offenses because they run similar offenses. The difference between the two is the defense. There is much more pressure 
from Grays Lake Central than there is from Grays Lake North. That pressure is the difference in what it takes for offense to be successful. Your quarterback does need some time. Mitchell Hughes to punt, nearly blocked, and that one goes out of bounds. It's going to be great field position for Grays Lake Central. Now one, now one thing we would like to see if you're Grays Lake North, you have to have made some Oh, wow. Past the 50. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay. So, Grays Lake Central will start in North Territory after they took the first drive 75 yards down the field for a touchdown. Now, at this point, I know it's still early in the game, and I know you play a lot of, a lot of young men both ways, but you have to have made some kind of adjustment defensively. You can't allow Carlson to just stand there and find receivers. He has had all day so far tonight. And again, we see four wide receivers out there for the Rams. Reyes, the lone back, along with Carlson in the backfield. From across the formation, Carlson fakes. Now ben. running to the right, and he's able to pick up a few, maybe four yards on the play. In nice terms shot. of the defense, that was much better. They sent, at least, they sent one extra rusher. It wasn't immediate pressure, but it was enough pressure that he couldn't throw on time, and they forced him to run. He did get four yards, which is a great job from Carlson. But on the other hand, they kept him from making that pass. And we finally saw some pressure coming from the Knights. They just haven't been able to get much going with that pass rush. We'll see if they can here on second down and seven. Carlson over the middle, caught, no, incomplete, just off the hands of Ohm. Carlson's pass intended for number five, Ohm. Falls incomplete. So once again, once again, St. Charles, Charles North sent another rusher. So basically now they have four people in the pass rush. The entire first drive, they only had three in the pass rush. Now what's that doing is it's forcing Carlson to make a decision earlier and it's given his receivers a little less time to get into their pattern. I'd imagine the Knights will be heating him up again here on third down and seven. Fake for Reyes, throws, tipped, batted, and nearly intercepted. What a job by the defense for Grays Lake North, and this forces the punt team to come out for Central. That was definitely a stop that they needed. They could not afford to allow them to just drive downfield and get a touchdown there. And they answered the call. You know, that we got more pressure. We speeded up the clock on the quarterback and forced them to make some, not necessarily under pressure throws, but some quicker throws. Massive stop, much needed for Grays Lake North. The punt team's out for Central. A little bit of a high snap, but a good boot. And Polium will let this bounce, and it'll take a bounce inside the 15-yard line. Well, at this point, Grays Lake North has the opportunity to get the ball on approximately the 12-yard line. So they lost field position. However, the stop was extremely important. Just a massive stop after that first drive. Boy, it was just like tic-tac-toe touchdown for the Rams. Not very good field position here for Mitchell Hughes, the first year starter. You see once again though, Grays Lake North with two tight ends in the formation. They give to Pulliam. Trying to shift his way, and he is brought down in the backfield. Matty Jens, the linebacker, stepping through the line of scrimmage to pull down Polium. Well, Matty Jens is a returning starter. He had an excellent year last year with 85 tackles. And so it looks like he's going to be leading the way on this defense again this year. Not only a fantastic football player, but a state champion in wrestling, was a state finalist in 2022.
came back and won the state title in 2023. And he's out to prove more on the football field this fall. Nothing like competition. The more opportunities that competition you can get, the better athlete you'll be. He's all about it, and he's calling out the signals to the defense. Second down and 12 for Grays Lake North. And a whistle. Looks like a procedural penalty come against North and delay of game. So second delay of game we've seen in this ballgame. First time against Grays Lake North, but costly penalty, especially given where they are on the field. Yes, I mean, if you if you think about the – they get into like kind of a muddle. I'll call it a muddle when you get into somewhat a huddle, and they don't do it all the time. They should have more time on the line of scrimmage. But once again, there was probably some miscommunication between the quarterback and the sideline, which throws them behind. So second and 17 from their own six. It'll be interesting to see how the Knights play this. Maybe have to be a little conservative here to avoid a safety or a turnover. Hughes throwing, and it's just over the head of his intended receiver. Was looking for Cam Bates, and he's the receiver that the Knights are looking to target tonight. He's got interest from the Big Ten, the Big 12. Runs a 4-5-40, but unfortunately for the Knights, Hughes hasn't had too much time, and really, it looked like Bates was pretty blanketed there. Yeah, I mean... He needs a little more time to use that speed. When you have fast receivers, I mean, if you give them time, they will get open. But if you don't give the quarterback time, they don't have time to get open, which is what happened that time. So third and 17, they pitch for Polium, working out of the end zone. He finds some room, breaks a tackle, gets close to the original line of scrimmage, but this will force a punt from Grays Lake North. Hopefully on this punt, they'll have a little better success than they did the last time. The last punt, I'm not sure if I agree with the referee, <laughs> but they, they literally didn't cross half midfield with the last punt. And so a little better punt will go a long way with the way that defense stepped up last time. And it is the quarterback, Mitch Hughes, who has to punt standing at the goal line. And he gets it off. And once again, a little bit of a short punt out of bounds on the other sideline. We'll see where they mark it. Okay, where's my side judge? My side judge didn't go very far. He's on a 30. Here he goes inside the 30. About the 28-yard line, outstanding field position for Grays Lake Central. Actually, 27 maybe yard line there yeah. for the Rams. Wow. Terry, I wouldn't be surprised to see Grays Lake Central take a shot for the end zone here. I, I wouldn't either. I, I mean, I expect them to take a shot at the end zone. Sudden change but. kind of play. Instead, they'll just give to Reyes, who leaps over one of his own linemen and is able to pick up a few. Well, I will say this. Reyes is a very entertaining back. Even in short plays, he's fun to watch. He is. He's been exciting so far. He picked up five there. So second and five for the Rams. Seven to nothing. Grays Lake Central with the lead with just over three minutes left in the first quarter. Reyes lining up to the left of Carlson. And a flag coming. And once again, looks like the Rams may have not gotten the snap off in time. Well, there's a discussion. Let's see. It's definitely against the Rams. Where's the signal? False start. start. False start call against the offense. So second and ten for Grays Lake Central. Second down. Cole Olson at the bottom of your screen. Junior wide receiver with some good size. It's 
Carlson looks that, that way, time. throws that way over oh. the middle. It's off the hands of Olsen. It was a great opportunity. They, t they had trips on the left side, which means they have three receivers. The two inside receivers ran routes to the outside. Uh, and when they ran those two routes to the outside, they emptied the middle of the field. Olsen, Olsen ran a skinny post, which is to run a post approximately where the uh, hatch marks are, and he was wide open. He catches that, he probably scores. And he probably would have walked in, but unfortunately for the Rams, Colton Ohm is down, being looked at by the training staff. And quickly back up to his feet, but you don't want to speculate on the injury, but hopefully nothing too serious. Hopefully not. Hopefully nothing more than maybe a cramp. Obviously, this Grays Lake Central team has already been dealt the heavy blow of losing their starting quarterback. Yeah, but I will say this. Carlson has filled in admirably. No question. At this point. So it looks like this is going to be his team for the year. And a lot of times, you know, you never obviously want to see a teammate get hurt. But when it comes to the quarterback position, sometimes that is what it takes to get the opportunity and Carlson, so far, has really impressed in his first career start. Oh, I very much so agree. He, I mean, he, he's doing a great job. And he obviously had prepared himself for this opportunity. And a timeout taken by Grays Lake North. Terry, I think Coach Johnson may be sensing just the importance of this play for his defense to get another stop in a seven to nothing hole and force maybe a decently long field goal attempt or a long attempt on fourth down. Yeah, I mean, to, when you look at the situation, Coach Johnson is feeling that his defense is playing relatively well. If he can get them out of this field position hole, which means they get a stop here. If they go for fourth down, they get a stop. Or if they can get a turnover here, that should give him the opportunity to get the ball across midfield and give his offense a chance. Because at this point, based upon field position, they are really behind the eight ball. The field position battle has definitely been in favor of Grays Lake Central to start this ball game. The Rams ahead seven to nothing with 240 to go in the first quarter. We got trips again. You see those three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Carlson fakes Reyes under pressure and he is brought down for a sack. Juan Marquez comes up with the massive sack for the Knights. Carlson tackling the backfield, loss of four on the play. Well, they got pressure, and they did a good job of covering up the receivers. They ran a similar pattern uh, that they were able to get Olsen wide open before, but that time the safety stepped up and kind of took him away, which made Carlson hold the ball a bit longer and gave the defensive line a chance to get there. So we'll see what the Rams do here. They did bring Flood out. Connor Flood, and it looks like they're setting up a punt here, so it might just be a little bit of a pooch punt coming from the 31-yard line. That, or they could try to draw North offside. Oh. See what they do. They Flood the is going to kick it, and it looks like this one is ticketed for the end zone. No, oh. it was pinned oh. near the one, and it did go over the goal line. So Grays Lake North will start at their own 20. That was some interesting action at the end of the punt. I mean, it looked like it could have been touched by North. <laughs> well, yeah, you see some of the Rams signaling touchdown. If Grays Lake North touched it, it is a touchback. No. So the Knights will start at their own 20, and the student section doesn't like it too much here at Central. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give an opinion on that one. <laughs> you can see the students in their patriotic gear. 
A lot of times they do different theme nights. Meanwhile, the Grays Lake North student section wearing all black on the other side. I, and both schools have represented in this crosstown rivalry. Here's Polium on the give. And he's able to pick up five on first down. Good run, a good run. It does seem like if North can get a running game going, they can change momentum in this game. You know, their passing game wasn't necessarily effective, but if they can get some yards and back this and get the secondary to step up, they might be able to pass after that. And when Coach Johnson came to this program last year, he said he really wanted to run the ball a lot more. They used to be a little bit more wide open throwing it. But you can see they got a couple tight ends. They give for Polium, and he somersaults his way to the 30, close to a first down, and he's got it. And so this is, I mean, if you can run the ball, you run the ball, you actually tax a defense. I mean, if you just, you keep dropping back and you just allow the defensive line to come running at you, they're kind of in control. But if you can run the ball, you're in control of the game. And not only that, Terry, you think about the time of possession in this first quarter. It's been heavily tilted towards Central. So the Knights could use some time of possession here as they wind down the first quarter. I agree wholeheartedly. Hughes back to pass, under some pressure, steps up, throws down field, incomplete. What a pass breakup defensively. Carter. Very nice play by Carter. Uh, I mean, he stepped up and, and just took away the pass. And the receiver looked open, but he was able to get his hand in front. He played excellent pass defense. He play excellent pass defense. One thing a lot of young defensive backs do as they attack the ball in the front with their front hand, they leave their back arm like wrapped around the receiver. In that case, he actually threw his back arm up in the air, which gave the ref, let the ref know that he was not holding the receiver. And so that's why he was able to make that great play. So a great play and also a smart play positioning wise as they hand off for Polium. Back towards the middle, he's past the 35, up to about the 37. Flag, flag on the play. On the play yeah. there is a flag. We'll see what the flag is. On the field. And Grays Lake North heading backwards, so. Oh. Wow, a chop block. Shot block is called against the offense. So that'll set the Knights back quite a bit. There's a few different ways to have a chop block. You can have someone come in from outside the formation and chop someone, which is a penalty. But also, you could have somebody involved in the play, and your teammate is blocking, and you end up blocking below the waist, and that's a chop block. Both of which are dangerous. However, the second one is pretty common because a lot of times you're, you're running to become part of a double team and you might fall or you might lose your balance or you end up on someone's legs. So that's really unfortunate that they had that chop block. It'll and set, it's a spot foul. It sets them well back, second and 23. At the end of the first quarter, it's a seven to nothing lead for Grays Lake Central over Grays Lake North, but it's the Knights with the ball when we come back for the second quarter on the CAC Network. Every goal, every touchdown, a promise, and that promise deserves safeguarding. Introducing draft protection and loss of value insurance. Dream without limits, we've got the coverage. Opalentia, plan your legacy. Call us now at 708-505-9719. Welcome back to Grays Lake Central as we're about ready to begin the second quarter. The Rams with a 7-0 lead over the Grays Lake North Knights. And Terry, the Knights, tough penalty there on the chop block. So they face a second and 23 inside their own 15-yard line. Yeah, that, uh, that could take them away from their running game right now, which is being very successful. And Hughes does look to pass on the far side over the head of Bates. It, I mean, it really looks like it really looks like the Knights need to be a balanced offense. 
if they're just depending just on the pass, it doesn't seem like they can get anyone open fast enough. So they need to be able to run, run the ball. I know it's 23 yards, and you're probably not going to get 23 yards on a run. But maybe on second down, they could have run it just to make sure that they kept the defense honest. Yeah, maybe catch Grays Lake Central off balance, and we'll have to see what they go to here. Third and 23. Might just give it to Polium to be safe, but they're looking to pass with Hughes. He's under some pressure, rolling right, throws, intercepted! Grays Lake Central with the turnover and a late hit. Johnny Lindbergh Sage comes up with the interception. Grand interception by number 42, Johnny Sage. Well, you know, when you have when you have a mistake made, a lot of times a penalty like this, which is a personal foul, actually happens because of frustration. You're on the field, you see the other team pick the ball off, he's going out of bounds, and you feel like you need to make that hit anyway that's the time where you really have to maintain your cool. You already have the downside of the interception. You don't want to compound that by having a penalty as well. So and now, two personal fouls have really hurt North. They had the chop block and then the late hit. So this sets up Central with first and goal from the 10 yard line. We see Brady Carlson go to work once again. The junior quarterback making his first career start. Carlson hands off to Reyes, and he's brought down by the shoestrings. Looks like Marquez was there on the tackle. This is a, this is a great opportunity for what's known as quick change defense. When something happens, a turnover, anything of that nature, when your defense goes on the field in a bad position, if they can make enough plays to force, to force uh, the Rams to take a field goal or get nothing, that's a victory. Because they're in a position they should have to give up a touchdown. That's what the Knights will look to do. Second and goal from the nine. Carlson rolls right. Now throws end zone a little bit low. He was once again looking for his younger brother, Bryce Carlson. Carlson's pass to number seven, Carlson falls incomplete in the end zone. I will say at this Third point, down. the Knights are playing great defense. I mean, when you consider the field position they've been put in for the majority of this game to have only given up seven points, they're doing an outstanding job. Right now, they're keeping Grays Lake North in this game. They've come up with a couple of stops, looking for another one here. Third and goal from the nine-yard line. Big play upcoming in the early stage of this ball game, just about a minute into the second quarter. Carlson fakes for Reyes, right. looking right, throws over the middle, touchdown, and once again, it's the Carlson connection. It's 13 to nothing, Rams. A very big, a very big play for the Carlson brothers. I will say the two of them have hooked up very well here in the first half. But on the other hand, you have a defense for the Knights that's playing a great game. However, they've given up 13 points because of field position. Heizer on for the extra point. It's up and good. It's 14 to nothing. Grays Lake Central. Brady Carlson has thrown two touchdown passes, both of them to his younger brother, Bryce Carlson. Terry, I'm just imagining Coach Perlman had to come in. He probably met Brady Carlson, one of his quarterbacks, and said, oh, hey, he's got a younger brother, too? <laughs> and what do you know, two touchdowns in the first half. Well, to, to, uh, to be very honest, when you're in high school football, families are really important. Typically, if you have one really good athlete and there's a younger brother, there's another really good athlete in that younger brother. And so sometimes those families will carry a program for a while. And that, hopefully, I'm sure from the Rams' point of view, is what's going to happen this season and especially a team that faced a moment of adversity last week with Cole Gillette going down. 
a two-year starter at quarterback. And now they have Carlson stepping up, both of the Carlsons in a big way, and a 14 to nothing lead. I mean, it's, it's really important when you can get those young people to step up. And one brother steps up and the other brother says, I'm going with you. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Heizer to kick. It was bobbled there by Ayivi. And Elijah Ayivi is brought down shy of the 25. So first and 10 for Grays Lake North. Now Terry, Central has dominated this game so far, but still, you're only down two possessions very early in the ball game. This is a critical drive for the Knights. Well, I, I really think the Knights should go back to their running game. Their running game was quite effective until they had the personal foul. And so you go back to the running game, it'll give you the opportunity to cook some clock as you move the ball downfield. If it's successful enough that you can get a score, you're right back in this game and you might flip field position as well. Pulliam, the running back in the backfield. Hughes looking to pass, under pressure, rolls right. He's gonna have to run with it. And he's able to pick up a few out close to the 30. Grand tackle made by number 42, Johnny Sage. It wasn't necessarily a design run, but the run got them the yards, <laughs> the yards they deserved then. And so, I'm an advocate of them running. I think they should run the ball a little more at this point. So far, Terry, I don't believe they've completed a pass. Maybe one in the first Maybe quarter. One. Maybe one. So second down and four for the Knights. And they do hand off to Pulliam. He is smothered in the backfield. Matty Jens coming up big once again. I'm Matty Jens, as a quality wrestler, what he's showing is that body control. So Matty Jens is able to take on a blocker, slip a blocker, and still be there in time to make a tackle. And a lot of that comes from his wrestling experience. And so a lot of times your wrestlers are like excellent football players. And he seems to be an excellent football player. And Terry, isn't the complaint usually that tacklers don't wrap up? That's probably not an issue with a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're taught to wrap up, and they wrap up all the time. <laughs> and meanwhile, a big first down there as Cam Bates makes his first catch of the night, and it's for a first down. And they needed it. They truly needed to, to get some chunk yards. Okay, that chunk, that chunk of yardage actually helps to move the sticks. So even if they don't get a first down here, they have an opportunity to punt near midfield and hopefully flip the field for them. Cam Bates is definitely a big play threat. You can see how the corner is playing about seven, eight yards off of him. They hand off to Pulliam, and once again, Matty Jens with another tackle for loss. Unofficially, I've got him with three tackles for loss in this first half. Matty Jens is really stepping up this year and helping to lead this defense. And so his presence is very important. Not only does he lead the defense from making those plays, but he's also the person that makes the calls, and he's the person that moves the personnel around pre-snap. And so he moves the linebackers, he moves the line, he gets everybody in the right position, and then he's ready to play. It's the kind of player you need at middle linebackers. Hughes is back to pass, looking to the far side. Bates took some contact, and there's the flag. Pass falls incomplete, but there is a flag. Terry looked like Jacob DeLeon got there pretty early on Bates. It, it does, it does. And there, there was a late flag as well, but I believe they're just calling the pass interference at this point. Yeah, pass interference. That will give Grays Lake North another first down. Not the conventional way, Terry, but Grays Lake North continues to move it down the field. Either way, that's what you need right now. You need to keep moving that ball if you're Grays Lake North. The Knights need to move the ball. They need to get some time off the clock. And to be quite honest, they need to score. They trail 14 to nothing, 8.36 to go in the second quarter. 
As Hughes has Pulliam behind him in the backfield. Looks to the near side. Oh. Throws broken up. <laughs> Zyle Martinez. That time, not early. He breaks up the pass. He had excellent timing on that play. You have to wonder if he was thinking about it a little bit. Pass interference on the last play. Okay, I better make sure, wait for that ball to arrive. If you're a good corner or a defensive back of any type, you have to forget that penalty. That penalty, once, once we've gone past that play, that didn't happen. You have to make the next play. And so that's what he did in that, op that, op that instance. He just made the next play. So second and 10. They fake to Pulliam, rolling right, oh. wide open, but dropped. They were looking for Jordan Casado McElhenney, and that makes it third down and 10. Okay, we got to help your quarterback out. You got it. Those, those easy catches, you got to make those. You got to make those. Your, your offense has struggled a bit, and when you have an opportunity to make a play, you got to step and make a play. Terry, I'm curious here. Third and ten, you're in plus territory. Maybe two down territory here? I think it's definitely two down territory. If you look at the field position they played from, if they gave up the ball here, it would be better in the field position they've been playing from most of the half. So maybe two plays to get ten. Hughes loading up, throws deep, but too deep. Cam Bates runs a 4-5-40, but not a 4-2-40. But you got to give him a chance to run under the ball. I mean, that that pass was very much so on a straight line. He didn't put a lot of air under it. A long pass like that, especially up the rail, you want to put it up in the air. If you have a fast receiver, he's going to outrun the defender to the ball. And that's what you want to give him a chance to do. Well, and despite the result, I think that does show the potential of a big play from Cam Bates. He just flew by his man right there. It was just overthrown. Oh, I agree with that. Ooh. Hughes on to punt, nearly had it blocked. And that once again will go out of bounds. Closer to the 22. So it's out of bounds, but it's out of bounds at the 22. So they're playing defense. They flipped the field. You know, I mean, a couple first downs, they were able to flip the field, which is really important for them because you can't keep putting your defense in a position that they have. 25, 30 yards to defend. Now they at least they're defending 75 yards of the field. So, and they at least got a bit of a breather on the sideline there. That drive starting in the first quarter. This defense has been on the field quite a bit tonight. 14 to nothing, Grays Lake Central. They'll start the drive at their own 22-yard line. Yeah, and and playing that many snaps at this point, at this point, you don't see the effect of that. But when you get to the into the third quarter, the fourth quarter, you will see the effect of that. Carlson hands off for Reyes. He is swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. A couple of tacklers there. Steven Bonilla looked to be the first man for the Knights. So second and long for Carlson and company. Go. Looks like Carlson, the receiver, is matched up with Max Boma, the linebacker. But Carlson's under pressure, just has to get rid of it over the middle, incomplete. There that, was a receiver in the area. That was some excellent defense at that time. Uh, when the ball was snapped, what happened on the night side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball, they actually rotated the secondary. And so, if you think about it like basketball, what they actually did was switch receivers. They switched people that they're guarding, which kind of forced Carlson to pull the ball down. Now, he thought he had a receiver, he pulled it down, and next thing you know, he has pass rush in his face. Well, that's one of the things you can do against a young quarterback. Try to mix up the coverages, try to get him a little bit confused, and now a third and long for the Rams. Wake for Reyes, throwing to the near side. He has his brother, Carlson, and not too much there as he's brought down by Carter Berenbaum. Well, at, at this point, 
I will say the Knights are playing excellent defense. I mean, the, the at, during this last drive, they had 75 yards to defend. In that 75 yards, they made three great defensive plays, and they forced a punt. Now, hopefully, they can get the ball a little closer to midfield and might have an opportunity to score. Because, you know, as a former defensive player, I will say this. When you're playing great defense and you look up at the score and you're down 14 points, you're like, what happened? <laughs> so. It's almost, in a way, Terry, yes, they've allowed two touchdowns, but it's been the offense putting them in a hole, giving Grays Lake Central some short fields, aside from that first drive when the Rams march mm -hmm. right down. Fair catch called for by Pulliam. He muffed the punt, and the Rams are on it. Another turnover as Jordan Cleaves recovers the muff punt. When you have two teams that seem to be physically very even, these mistakes is what's going to make the game. That's what's going to make the difference. Because these teams seem to be very even physically, you know, defensively and even offensively once, uh, whenever the Knights are running the ball. And so, but those mistakes are hard to cover up. Second turnover of the night for Grays Lake North. So Central takes over at the 35-yard line. First and 10, the Rams ahead 14-0. Carlson throws far side, caught. Near the marker, Cole Olson picks up eight yards on first down. And at this point, at this point, uh, Grays Lake North is working to pull the ball out. You know, I mean, you're playing good defense, and there's been some turnovers against you. You kind of want to get that turnover back. And so that's what they're working on whenever that receiver catches the ball. So second and two, great situation for Central inside the 30-yard line of the Knights. Carlson fakes Reyes. He'll keep it himself, has the first down and more near the 20. Carlson on the quarterback keeper. Earns it up for another hurrying home. be a really important drive if the Rams can score on this drive when you go to halftime if you go to halftime down 21 to nothing regardless of how well you play defensively you still don't feel great about it you know you said what can we do to get back in this game opportunity to go up by three scores for the Rams Carlson looking to throw under pressure and he is sacked Driven back by Marquez, his second sack of the night. Marquez has been getting penetration on passing downs. Uh, and that opportunity, I mean, he's quick off the ball. He's a sizable young man at uh, 6'1", 205. And so he's fast. He actually plays much bigger than he, he does. Did. I was going to say, maybe... <laughs> Might be off on the roster. He looks a little bit bigger than 6'1", 205. On the field, he looks a lot bigger than 205. <laughs> so second and 18 for the Rams after the sack by Marquez. Carlson throws to the right side, caught by Ohm, who's back in the game. And a gain of... About 10 on the play. And just a, a tip for Mr. Carlson, I mean, Mr. Marquez, if you're bigger than 205, you make sure you get that change. <laughs> so that will help you get in college. 205, you're a little small. But you look more like 235 to me. I would say I definitely agree there on Marquez, and he is impressed in the early going. So third and nine. Ball on the 19-yard line for the Rams and a flag. And a false start on Grays Lake Central. So you go from third and long to third and a bit longer. Yes. 
yards, it remains third down. A very important down. A very important down for both teams. The Rams, the Rams would like to see another score right now and maybe get that psychological advantage going into halftime. And the Knights would like to get a stop here and keep their defense mentally in this game. The Knights defense has come up with some big stops tonight. Can they do it again on third and long? Carlson looking deep. He's got a man. He has his brother again. The third time tonight. Brady Carlson to Bryce Carlson. 24 yards on the score. It's 20 to nothing. The Carlson brothers are having an outstanding night tonight. An outstanding night. Terry, I'm trying to think of examples of a brother quarterback and receiver combo. Uh, you don't have you don't have it a lot. You don't have too many. <laughs> you don't have it a lot. High snap on the extra point and can't bring it up. a little bit of a mistake. First time that the Rams have not made the extra point, but they'll take the three score lead. Yes. I'm telling you that when you get when you have those brother tandems, they make plays that you can't imagine. I, I have seen one. Uh, it was in the playoffs. I was watching a Willowbrook team where I where I worked at, and there were the uh, Tumblety brothers. And so both of them ended up being all state. You see me? <laughs> so, <laughs> Terry, they've probably been practicing that play in the backyard for 15 years. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> oh, they probably practiced them longer than that. Or maybe. Well, Bryce Carlson's only a sophomore, so <laughs> yeah, 15 is about all That's he had available. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, what a night so far for yes. the Carlson brothers. Holding up the three, Bryce Carlson, three touchdowns, count them out. Three times he's found the end zone tonight. Well, I, I tell you, actually, if you look at it, playing that tough schedule for uh, the Rams is really paying off tonight. It's really paying off tonight. So. They're ready to play. Now, in that tough schedule, they had a couple lopsided losses. But in those lopsided losses, you get a chance to play your second team and third team people. Short kick caught by Polium. Probably would have gone out of bounds, but instead, Grays Lake North will start at their own 24. Well, you know, I, I think in an instance like that, uh, Pulliam's had, he's had some success earlier in the game. But the last couple times he touched the ball, he was met with a lot of resistance. And in this opportunity, he just sees an opportunity to make a play. And he kind of loses his head a little bit. And he catches the ball that probably would have easily have gotten him to the 35 with the penalty. And so uh, and there's now, another penalty. Well, <laughs> so, let's see. Well, they are calling a legal procedure there on Central, but the question is, Polium caught the ball, and that's what Brent Perlman's asking about. But maybe if he has a foot out of bounds, is that? Uh, I see. So actually, it might have been a smart play by Polium if he had that foot out of bounds. So basically, they're saying the ball was out of bounds when he caught it. And so they're going to get the penalty that it looked like they, they weren't going to get because he decided to catch it. <laughs> Either way, it works out to Grays Lake North. Well, so get the ball at 30. They're going to re-kick. Re okay. So they're going to move the ball, take the yards on the kicking team and then reset. Well, we'll see if it's a better kick this time coming from Marcus Heizer with his team ahead 20 to nothing. 
All three touchdowns coming from Brady Carlson to Bryce Carlson. Can Grays Lake North come up with a response? And this is an opportunity, Terry, four-minute offense. If they can get a score, they do get the ball to start the second half. They could really change this game pretty quickly. Well, the important thing is not just the score, keeping the score, getting the score tighter. The important thing is attitude at this time. So if they can get a score, you have a much better attitude in the locker room. And then you get the ball after halftime. Not too much doing on the return there from Elijah Ayibi. Grand tackle made by number 20, Alex Carter. Well, you got four minutes. And since you have four minutes, you can still go back to your running game. You know, I mean, the running game has been the most successful part of the offense. And once you get the ball moving on your running game, you, then you will have the opportunity to throw the ball. You have the opportunity to use your speed receiver on the outside. Hughes with the play action fake, rolls right, throws downfield. He's got Bates down there and he makes the catch near the 25 yard line. What a play. Cam Bates, they've been looking to get it to him downfield all night and they finally hit him. And he's been open, you know, so that's the first time they hit him. Uh, I'm sure in their eyes, it's too bad he couldn't have kept his feet because he had space. He could have got to the end zone. But that's a very important play. That gives them an the opportunity to be within scoring distance immediately. So gain maybe of you get the opportunity you could score here, and you might have a chance to get the ball back as well as your defense is playing. Over 40 yards on the catch there by Bates, and now Hughes running with it, and he has cut down. Who else? Matty Jen. Eddie Jen's obviously the leader of the defense. And in that case, in that case, the Knights just had, they had a mistake. There was a mistake in the mesh because Pulliam was running in one direction where Hughes turned in the opposite direction for a handoff. So one of them made a mistake, but either way, either way, they tried to recover from that and they only lost the yard. So you still have plenty of time and you have plenty of room to make a play. Hughes looking to pass, going deep once again, and overthrown, looking for Bates near the pylon. To be quite honest, at this point, you still have your running game. So yes, you did hit Bates. Yes, they're trying to guard him now. But what that's done for you is that's taken the secondary out of the box. And so basically you're dealing with four to five people in the box instead of dealing with seven or eight people in the box. So you should be able to run the ball. Be interesting. Maybe Brian Johnson goes to a run here on third and 11. As you said, Terry, not too many hats in the box. And also you have two downs. You're not going to punt this. And you're definitely in. I don't know if you have the kicking game to get a field goal. Hughes steps up. Now he's going to run with it, and he is smothered. Looked like Devin White and Maddie Jens combining to bring down Hughes. And so now you, you have to take advantage of this down. Game of four on the play. That brings up fourth down. And probably about eight yards, about fourth and eight. And so you pretty much have to pass it at this point but you don't have to pass it deep. I mean, you have to maintain your cool, see if you can get a receiver open. You don't have to take the risk of throwing deep unless it's open. Hughes, rolling ref, left, now right, towards the sideline, throws back across, and it's broken up. Rari Barnaby breaks down, breaks up the pass, and a turnover on down. It was a great defensive play at that point. You actually needed one right there. I mean, if you want to have that, that mental edge going into halftime, you had to get a stop here. So 20 to nothing, the Rams take over. So Terry, would you play it conservative here or go two minute drill with the 20 to nothing lead? Well, as well as their passing game is going, I'd, I'd use the two minute drill. I'd try to see what I could get right now. 
They do have one-on-one -on -one coverage on Bryce Carlson yes, at the bottom do. after he's already got three touchdowns. Carlson and wide open in the looking middle. for him over the middle. Caught first down and more near midfield. There was a flag down. Looked like maybe offsides, but now Bryce Carlson, Bryce Carlson is down. Well, Terry, it was another nice play for the Rams as we get the call. It was an illegal shift on the offense, so that wipes away that play, but unfortunately, Bryce Carlson down now after yes. making that catch. I mean, it was one of those tackles where you kind of, where the defender's behind the offensive player. And so the defender's weight kind of drags onto the offensive player, which is why they took away the whole horse collar thing, because that's what happens in a horse collar. This, this, in this play, it wasn't a horse collar. He was just behind him. But hopefully he'll be okay. Yeah, this is unfortunate to see because it's been an incredible night for Bryce Carlson. Three receiving touchdowns that has led to the 20 to nothing lead. So hopefully he'll be fine. I mean, what a first half it's been for the Rams. And for Brent Perlman, the first time for him as the head coach in this rivalry, as now Carlson being brought to the sideline with some help from the trainers, hobbling a little bit. Hopefully he's all right. And you can see the emotion because it's just been an incredible night. And unfortunately, it looks like his night is done. Yeah. Well, hopefully he'll be, he'll be okay in the long run because he was having an outstanding night. And, I mean, if you just look at the night he's having, he's emerged as pretty much their go-to receiver tonight. And, so, so hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to play, if not the second half, at least the rest of the season. Eli Gillette comes in at receiver now as they give to Reyes, and Reyes is brought down just shy of the original line of scrimmage. Okay. They're in two-minute mode. You see Bryce Carlson there and being consoled. Well, obviously, just the range of emotions. I mean, the highest of highs with three touchdowns, and then unfortunately he goes down. A lot of times that reaction is not just the physical reaction, and a lot of times it's the emotional reaction, as you mentioned. Carlson going for Gillette, and he takes a shot. Pass interference coming. Terry, despite now Carlson being out of the game, it, it seems like Central has just found out that they have a good matchup against this secondary yes. for Grays yes. Lake North. And, uh, and Pass interference against the defense. I mean, you look at it, and the Knights are still playing good defense, but they do make periodic mistakes on receivers. But when you have a spread offense and you have a lot of receivers, there's a lot of opportunities to get some results. Result. And if your quarterback Rams is accurate, down. like, like uh, Brady Carlson has been tonight, you can take advantage of those mistakes. You know, I mean, it happens all the time. It's just a lot of times you don't have a quarterback that has the ability to take advantage of it. So 20 to nothing, the Rams ahead. First and 10 from their own 40 with 111 left in the first half. Carlson fakes Reyes, throws to the far side, and that's caught. Cole Olsen close to the first down marker. And he does have it. Okay, another first down. 
Stops the clock for a moment, but it reset the sticks. And again, it's like having a mini timeout. It stops the clock. And you just go right back to your two minute offense. Carlson looking over the middle, just a little bit overthrown. Going for Eric Brum. And, and Terry, we talked about the two minute offense. Obviously, you want to score here, but this is great experience for a young quarterback to run this two minute drill because he may have to run it later in the season when you're not ahead 20 yeah. to nothing. Yeah, and, and the way they're playing tonight, he may have to run it when they might have an opportunity to win conference. <laughs> you know, because they're playing pretty well tonight off No question. You know, coming into this game, we talked about the loss of Cole Gillette. It was in his second year as starting quarterback. And Brady Carlson has stepped in. And, well, no big yeah. deal. Just three touchdown passes in the first half. Yeah. Okay, looking to pass pressure. again. And oh, that one incomplete. Yeah. Looking for Olsen. On that far sideline once again. Okay. So third and ten for the Rams. Send a man in motion across the formation, Brum. And uh, Carlson is sacked. He lost the football, oh. recovered by the offensive line. But once again, Juan Marquez, his third sack tonight. I, tell you, I just don't believe Juan Marquez is 205. <laughs> <laughs> just... I mean, Juan Marquez makes plays. And he, he looks long. And he looks fairly thick. I just don't believe he's 205. <laughs> Grays Lake North calls a timeout. This timeout brought to you by BCU Credit Union. Score big when you bank with BCU. Interesting timeout call by Coach Johnson with only 32 seconds to work with. I suppose maybe you just want to take a shot with Bates if you get the ball here. Maybe. I, I mean, that's the only thing I can see out of this. And because at this point, you you figure that the Rams are not going to go for it. Maybe you want to talk to your defense to make sure they don't jump on sides. But even if you got those yards, you wouldn't get a first down. So maybe it's just to get the opportunity to throw a deep one. So we will see. Make sure you get yours tonight, the All American Dog. Well, despite a 20 to nothing score so far in this first half, the atmosphere has not been lacking no. at all. No. Plenty the, of noise. The kids are still into it. On they both are. Sides. Most of the noise coming from the Grays Lake Central side, but the North students still standing across the field. They're not going to go for a block. Looks like they have a return set up for Pulliam. Connor Flood on to punt. Low snap. Flood, Ooh, it is blocked. He did get blocked. Yep, yep. He did get blocked. And it's recovered by North. They have it at the 50-yard line. Terry, they weren't setting up a block, but the low snap gave him enough time to get in there and block the punt. Uh, so I must say, Coach Johnson, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't see a reason for that timeout, but you know your team a lot better than I do. <laughs> Gives them an opportunity from the 50-yard line. The Knights trail 20 to nothing with 25 seconds left in the first half. Have to imagine they're going to take a shot deep, but they throw an out route near the sticks for a first down. Well, you... Well, the Rams have four people in the secondary standing 20 to 25 yards deep. They're, they're not going to let you go over their head. But if you can get them 10, 12 at a time and get out of bounds, you got plenty of time to get it done. That's a reason why a lot of fans tend not to like the prevent defense, but with a 20-point lead, you can understand what Coach Perlman's doing with his defense. Oh, I definitely understand what he's doing, but... 
The old saying was it prevents victory. <laughs> Hughes with a fake, rolls right, throws, and it is caught by Bates again. Another first down for the Knights with 15 to go in the first half. Bates is having a heck of a night. I mean, they targeted him a few times that weren't able to connect. But last week he had 213 yards. And so he is definitely their go-to man. Had seven touchdowns over 500 yards last season. First and 10 from the 30. Hughes goes for Phyllis, and he is brought down in the middle of the field. Timeout called by North with nine seconds to go. They do still have one timeout remaining. Well, you look at it this way. If you get a first down, it stops the clock to reset the sticks. You can probably get to the line of scrimmage and run another play without using a timeout. If you can get that, get an out, a out route or something to the sideline, you might be able to get out of bounds without using a timeout. Check that. That was their last timeout. So they just have to use the sticks or the sideline. Sticks to the sideline or throw it into the end zone. Now, if you throw it to the end zone, it's going to burn up maybe seven seconds. But if you score, you score. If you don't score, you get a couple more seconds to maybe run another play. Terry, you mentioned before they had defensive backs 15, 20 yards back on Bates, but here from the 24, maybe you just throw up a jump ball 50 50 and see if he can come down with it. Well, he's definitely your highlight receiver. He has a lot of speed. That's not going to do him, do him any good in this case. But you pull out an air into the ball, you can see if he can out jump somebody for it. Hughes looking right. Flag comes out, throws deep, incomplete. Holding on Grace Lake North. On the field. Holding is the call against the offense. Okay. Uh, lose yardage here. But still got four seconds to go to the end zone. Just has to be another shot to the end zone from the 34. It remains second down. Four seconds left in the half. Grays Lake North trails 20 to nothing. Well, you know, I know Cam Bates is definitely your go-to receiver, but he's getting a lot of attention. So you might want to look at someone else. If you can get someone else deep enough for the end zone and, and see if you can get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone. Might be Christian Phyllis, the receiver at the bottom of the screen, number 12. I can see that. He's a, he's a big kid. He's going for Bates and overthrown, but pass interference. Pass interference to get another play. So one more chance for the Knights. There is a flag on the field. You get 15 yards and another play. Walk right in your side. There we go. Ready, two, take two. Pass interference is the call against the defense. So Terry, as a defensive back, what should they have done there? How sh how should they have defended that to avoid the penalty? Well, you want to avoid the penalty, but to be totally honest, you'd rather have the penalty than give up the touchdown. <laughs> no question and about so, that. I mean, yes, they're going to get 15 yards, so they're going to be about 17 or something of that nature, but they still have to make the play. And so you got to make them make a play. If you don't make, oh, they're going to keep the field goal. Yeah. Christopher Von Briesen on. It's a 36-yard field goal attempt for Von Briesen, who's one for one on the season. His one make was over 40 yards, so he's got the leg. Snap is good. Kick is up, and it Ooh. is no good. Hook to the left, and that will do it for the first half. What a first half for the Grays Lake Central Rams. They lead 20 to nothing. And Brady Carlson, Terry, three touchdown passes, but unfortunately he did lose his brother due to injury near the end yes. of the half. And his brother was definitely the go-to receiver in the first half. However, Carlson was hot as a quarterback. I mean, when he threw it to someone, typically he was on target, even if, if they caught it or not. And so you can, you can keep going back to your passing game which would actually be advantageous for them at this point. 
Now, on the other hand, if you if you think about the Knights and what they have to do, what the Knights have to do is continue to bring some pressure. They need to continue to bring pressure. If they can, maybe they can flip this score. And they'll look to do that in the second half. It's a 20 to nothing lead for Grays Lake Central as we take a break here on the CAC Network. Every goal, every touchdown, a promise, and that promise deserves safeguarding. Introducing draft protection and loss of value insurance. Dream without limits, we've got the coverage. Opalentia, plan your legacy. Call us now at 708-505-9719. Welcome back to Grays Lake Central High School. It's a 20 to nothing lead for the host Rams over their rivals from Grays Lake North. Connor Klingen and Terry Harrell here with you. And Terry, just a really dominant first half from Central. What adjustments can North make to make a comeback in the second half? Well, first and foremost, North is going to get the ball first. And so they need a solid drive right off the bat. That will mentally get them back into the game. After that, they really need to apply some pressure to Brady Carlson. He still has he still has too much time to pass the ball. Although, when they have the opportunity, I we have seen. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to I have to apologize, Juan Marquez. We've seen Mr. Marquez put some pressure on, and he has three sacks in the first half. The other thing that they need to be able to do is they need to be able to run the ball. Run, running the ball will give them a chance to control the game and keep and keep Central from scoring. You know, if they can keep Central from scoring and get one or two scores, it's a game. And the mental attitude of your team gets so much better. And then you have an opportunity to win this game. We did see them try to get Dom Polium going a little bit, but you mentioned the play of Brady Carlson wasn't under pressure too much other than from Juan Marquez with those three sacks. And how impressive has this start been? His first career start, three touchdown passes in the first half. To be quite honest, it looks like he's been the starter for two years. I mean, he opened up the game like right on, right on target with all his receivers, drove them right down the field, got him a score. When he was forced to run, he ran effectively leaned forward, got some positive yards, and he gets the team organized and ready to go. They only had one, uh, one delay a game penalty, and that basically came from what looked like miscommunication between him and the sideline. And so he looks like this is what he's been doing. And so I'll say that that says a lot about him as a young man to prepare himself when he's been sitting on the bench. As you said, Terry, it's clear that Carlson, despite being the backup coming into the season, was preparing as if he was the starter because now being forced into action, starting with last week, he comes in now his first start and everything just seems to be clicking. Yes, I mean, and, and that's that, that says a lot about his preparation. Prepara a lot of kids believe that, you know, someone else is starting, we're done. You know, you're the starter and... Let's see what happens, maybe. That's not the attitude you can have when you're part of a team. When you're part of a team, you prepare yourself like you're going to play. And when the opportunity presents itself, you're ready to play. When you get an opportunity, it's not time to get ready. You have to be ready when you get the opportunity. And Carlson has certainly been ready. What a performance in the first half from Brady Carlson. The junior making his first career start to take a look at head coach Brent Perlman in his first season as head coach. And Terry, you mentioned earlier a three-time state champion at Prospect and has to like what he's seeing from his team so far tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, as a coach that's developing a team in the middle of the season, there's a couple things you have to be really excited about. You're excited that your, your backup quarterback comes off the bench, starts tonight, and plays like he's a two-year starter. You're excited about your defense. First of all, first of all, was ready to play at the after the first the very first drive, and not only that, they were able to take away the running game, which seems to be the strength of the Knights. They were able to take that away, and so that puts the Knights in in a bad situation if they can't run. 
what do they have at this point? What they have, what they have is Cam Bates, who's a heck of a receiver. But you can't depend on one receiver to win you a game. Yeah, they really tried to get it to Bates. And near the end of the first half, he did have that big play, the 40-plus yard catch. But still, Grays Lake North has been unable to find the end zone, but they'll start with the ball in the second half, trailing 20 to nothing. Marcus Heizer to kick off. Dom Polian back deep for the Knights. This kickoff near the sideline is taken by Yeevee. And he weaves his way along that far sideline, makes a cutback, breaks a tackle, and he's out past the 40-yard line to the 42. A really nice return to open the second half. I mean, and that was a return that got the sideline excited, got their fans excited. And so hopefully that can carry forward for them. See head coach Brian Johnson in his second season leading Grays Lake North. Terry, as you said, he had that chance at halftime to make adjustments. We'll see how it plays out offensively for the Knights. And you know, I'm sure he understands what was not working. And so I'm sure he's made adjustments. I mean, he's an excellent coach. He was 9-2 and two last year in his first year. So he's a man that's prepared to get the job done. First year as head coach last year, nine and two. Co-champions of the conference. Hughes looking to pass, throws past the 50 yard line. Nathaniel Hickson making the play and the Knights are into plus territory. Which is part of that first adjustment that he made. They threw the ball and it wasn't Cam Bates. I'm not saying you don't want to get Cam Bates the ball, but you need to get someone else the ball sometime to take the pressure off of Cam Bates. Second catch of the season for Hickson. Sets up a second and short. Hughes rolling out. Flag could be holding. It looks like it's in that area. And we'll see the call. Hughes on the quarterback keeper, but there is a flag yeah. on the field. Holding is the call against the offense. It's a very inopportune hold at that time. But what happens a lot with holding calls, if you're an offensive lineman and you're sliding your feet, you're trying to stay in front of somebody and your quarterback takes off running, it changes the angle that the defense is running in. And you just, especially with your hands out, you just close your hands and now you're holding. So that does happen. And so a lot of times as an offensive lineman, you have to maintain your discipline. So as a quarterback takes off, you release the defender. And hopefully your quarterback will run the defender. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Definitely an unfortunate holding penalty for the Knights. Now face second and long, trailing 20 to nothing. Hughes under pressure. Rolls out, throws across his body, and he has a man. Dom Polium on the far sideline takes it near the 30-yard line. We've been waiting for Polium to make a big play, and he's wide open there for the first down and more. Well, as you mentioned earlier in the game, they did want to get Pulliam the ball. And if you can't just give it to him in the backfield, if you can get him upfield and give it to him in the open field and give him a chance to run by somebody, that's just as, if not more, effective. So the Knights at the 32-yard line of the Rams, empty backfield once again. This has been the adjustment in the second half. And Hughes throws, it's caught by Christian Phyllis. Just about a yard short maybe of the first down, a couple of yards short. So already this half, in this drive, they've thrown the ball three times to three different receivers. Now you make the defense have to think. And perhaps an opportunity for Bates who they tried to force it to a little bit in the first half. Looking that way, and the catch is made by Bates. Makes a cut back inside the 20. And he's got the first down and a little bit more. So now a red zone chance for the Knights. By far their most effective drive of the game at this point. So they can cap this off with a score. Now we got a game. Started with a great return from Elijah Ayivi. And it's first and 10 at the 19-yard line for the junior quarterback, Mitchell Hughes. Once again, empty backfield. Low snap. 
has to get on top of it and just dives forward. Smart play there by Hughes. Yeah, I mean, he did. Oh, flag on the play. He didn't make a bad play worse by trying to do too much. He just picked the ball up and dove forward, tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. There is a flag. On the field. Personal, fouls the ah, personal foul going on Grays Lake Central. And that'll be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down for the Knights. Now, one thing that we have to remember, if you go back to the first half, when things started to turn the wrong way for the Knights is when they made personal fouls. So now you have that scenario happening here for the Rams. And so hopefully the Ram defense will step up at this point and make a stop. So it should be first and goal from the 10. Hughes looking to the left, throwing for the end zone and well over the head of Christian Phyllis and another flag. Yep. Yep. It was a personal foul. Rough the passing. Roughing the passer, two straight personal fouls. Look to be Jackson Pratt. And once again, half the distance to the goal. And this is where for Coach Perlman has to be frustrated with the discipline of his team, two straight personal fouls. Regardless of the outcome of this game, they will have a long discussion <laughs> about this drive. So uh, now first and goal from the five. Now, and that's one of those personal fouls where Defense linemen, as you run by the quarterback, you kind of just push them. The ball's gone, you push them. It doesn't seem like much, but by the letter of the law, it's a personal foul, and it is rough in the passer. And a lot of people do it, and sometimes they don't call it, but in this instance, they did. Empty backfield for Hughes. Under pressure, rolling left, throws for the end zone, incomplete. Broken up by Alex Carter. Broken up by number 20, Alex Carter. Second down. That's the second time tonight, Terry, we've seen Carter with a really nice pass breakup. Yeah, and, and, and Carter, I mean, he's willing to take a chance to make a play. And so there's a lot of defensive backs that won't take that chance. And he's, he's a person that forgets the last play and makes the next play. That's what's going to make him successful as a defensive back. They pitch to Polium left side, trying to find some room. He's brought down just shy of the goal line at the one by Matty Jens. A touchdown saving tackle and a record breaking tackle. Officially, we believe Matty Jens now the all time leading tackler at Grays Lake Central High School. Breaks a record that was set in 1976. But meanwhile, third and goal from the one. Hughes is stacked up. He did not get into the end zone. Congratulations to Matty Jen. You know, making that many tackles is a big deal, especially in high school when you when you basically play nine to ten games a year and your career is no longer than three to four years. That's a heck of a record. So congratulations, Matty Jen. And meanwhile, on the next play, Hughes lost a yard on the QB sneak. So fourth and goal from the two. Critical moment in this game. The Knights looking to get on the board, trailing 20 to nothing. Well, Central looks for a goal line stand and they jumped. Let's see what the call is. Some movement on the line, offsides, and that'll move it half the distance to goal, so back to the one. Offsides called against the defense. It remains fourth down. And the way these two teams are playing on this goal line stand, that's a very important yard. That could be the difference Huge. between between change of possession and a touchdown. Be interesting to see if the Knights go back to the QB sneak after it was stacked up the last time they tried it. Personally, I would go to my running back. I'd go to Pullman. He's standing right behind Hughes in the backfield. 
And they give it to Pulliam. And he's brought down initially in the backfield, gets a block from his quarterback, and heads for the corner. Touchdown, Knights. What a block by the quarterback, Mitchell Hughes, setting up Dom Pulliam for the touchdown. It's 20 to 6. That's why you go to your running back. <laughs> because, I mean, there was nothing there. But he maintained his balance. He was able to pull away from the defense. He pulled away, found some, found the opening. And when he ran to the outside, he picked up a block, and particularly from his quarterback, and it gave him an opportunity to get in. So they got the touchdown they needed after the half. This could be a different game. Extra point, up and good. Christopher Von Briesen, and just like that, back to a two-possession ball game. A much-needed drive for the Knights coming out of halftime. Very much so. The one thing that we that we didn't mention coming out of halftime that we have to remember, this is a team that won nine games last year. So if you won nine games last year, you've had to fight through some adversity. So I'm sure this isn't the first time they came out of halftime behind. They came out and they responded. And so that's what you expect from a team that's been successful in the past. And so at this point, if their defense can respond in the same fashion, we could seriously have a game here in the second half. And you have to imagine here, Terry, right now all the pressure is right back onto Central because they had the 20 to nothing lead going to the locker room. Now they've given up, given up a touchdown. And if you get stopped here, as you said, Terry, we're right back to, hey, this is a close ball game rivalry game where you felt like maybe at halftime they were running away with it. Yeah, and I know it sounds strange to say that, that you're still up 20 to seven and the pressure's on you, but the pressure truly is on you because if you allow them to come out and have a great defensive stand here and get the ball in decent field position, now you gotta stop. 7.43 left in the third, a 20 to seven lead for the Rams. Christopher Von Briesen on to kick it off. Kicks it deep near the end zone. It's caught at the one. Good return here for Martinez along the far sideline. 29 yards, he brings it out to the 30. Very nice return. So, but now it's time for the offense and defense to get on the field, and we'll see who's responding after half. Can this defense for Grays Lake North come away with a stop? Now, Terry, somebody we haven't seen too involved tonight, the leading tackler for Grays Lake North, Tyler McBride. Is he the man who can make a big play? and help out this Grays Lake North defense to come away with a stop. Well, as your middle linebacker, they kind of need him to step up at this point. And there he is. <laughs> he brings <laughs> he down Romeo Reyes in the backfield. And as you said, he answered the call along <laughs> with Juan Marquez. It has been all Juan Marquez. And you can see, Terry, just the energy of this defense. It seems to be up now that they know their offense is there with them. Yes, I mean, they feel like they have a chance to win this game. And so you need someone to make a play. It's time to make a play. And that's what they did that time. So they're looking, everyone's looking for an opportunity to make a play. Second down and 11 for the Rams. Brady Carlson calling out the play. Takes a low snap, quick throw, broken up. What a play defensively. Elijah Ayivi making the play. As important as the plays being made is the excitement that they're showing on the sideline. That shows you that everyone is in this game. That shows you that Coach Johnson had a serious talk at halftime and everyone is responding. Must have been quite a speech from Coach Johnson, but also just the adjustments that we've seen in the second half. So a key third down upcoming. Third and 11 for the Rams. Okay. Eli Gillette at the top of the screen. Three wide receivers to the bottom. Carlson fakes to Matty Jens, throws deep. deep. Got a man incomplete though. 
They thought he had Cole Olsen. Lamont Duncan Williams got a hand in there to break it up. That was some fantastic coverage. I mean, it's, it's coverage that, as they say, as they say when you watch a college game, they're letting them play. They let them play a little bit. There was, <laughs> there was some hand play during that, during that, during that run, but that was an excellent play as a defensive back. I mean, you have to be willing to to jump in there and challenge the receiver, and the receiver was running. The receiver is much bigger than that defensive back. However, because he was willing to challenge him, he kept it from being a successful pass. And now they're punting. It could be a different game here in one more drive. Connor Flood on to punt. Dominique Pulliam back to return deep for the Knights. And a flag. Looks like a procedural penalty going against the Rams, so that'll push them back five yards further. Ball start call against the offense. Oh, false start. Well, back him up five yards. It remains fourth down. As, as, as important as field position was in the first half, it's still very important now. This just, give, just gives the Knights the opportunity to get the ball closer to the end zone. Blood standing near his own 10. And another flag comes out. Been a lot of laundry flying in this second half. <laughs> a lot. I mean, I mean and, uh, another false, false start. start. False start called against the offense. They'll back up another five yards. It remains. Down. Terry, you occasionally see back-to-back -back false starts early in a game or if there's a lot of crowd yeah. noise, but not too often on back-to-back -back punt attempts. Now, the one thing that can happen on a punt attempt is because with the exception of the snapper, everyone else is supposed to take at least the count before they leave. And so maybe they're leaving a little bit early, but... Flood does get that one away. Taken by Pulliam on the near sideline. Puts a foot in the ground. Breaks a tackle on the near sideline. Has room. Cuts back in the 40. Near the 30. And two flags come out. Grand tackle made by number 28, Connor Flood. But there is a flag. Someone is. They are obviously hanging out the laundry now. It's just, I mean, they just were throwing flags that play. See the Knights marching back. Looks like a block in the back. Despite the penalty, though, you continue to see the excitement that Dom Polian brings to the game, obviously scoring the touchdown and quite a return there, a couple broken tackles. Well, when you have someone that's one of your premier players, you expect him to respond to adversity, and he's responding to adversity. He stepped into, you know, he's stepping into the game in the second half, looking to make a play every time there's an opportunity. Knights trail 27, another flag. Too many men on the field for the Knights, an illegal substitution. That'll move them back five yards. Terry, I can't remember the last play there wasn't a flag on. <laughs> no, it's like... First down. We've had a drive full of flags. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an important drive. The it's Knights an important drive, exactly. Trailing 27, Hughes loading up, fires towards Bates, who makes the catch at the 50. <laughs> he signaled first down. It was not a first down. It makes it about second and six, but he did pick up nearly 10 yards. Maybe didn't realize it was first and 15. It yeah, probably didn't. <laughs> but last year, this was a very tight game. And it looks like it could turn into a very tight game tonight. Empty backfield for Hughes. Throws over the middle. Ooh. It's off the hands of Bates incomplete. Hughes pass falls incomplete. Third down. Now, the one thing that's gone along with, with, with North being more successful on their passing game is the amount of time he's getting. 
In the first half, he was under pressure the entire first half. In the second half, he hasn't been under pressure very much. When he has been under pressure, he kind of, he kind of rolls out to the right or the left. Give but he seems to be much more effective when he can just stand there and throw. He throws deep, incomplete, was going for Christian Phyllis, far sideline. But, Terry, as you were saying there with the time, you have to give credit to this offensive line, Caden O'Brien, Juan Marquez, who plays on both lines. They have given him a lot more time, but it looks like the Knights will have to punt here from midfield. Yeah, but they still have that excitement. They still, they still played excellent defense last trip. And the offensive attempts here weren't bad offensive attempts. They had one, they just didn't catch the ball. You know, he threw the ball, he was on target, they just didn't catch it. And so they need another stop so they can respond offensively. Hughes back to punt, Sean Mullen back to return for the Rams and he'll let this one take a bounce inside the 20. It'll roll to a stop. At about the 18-yard line, that's where Grays Lake Central will take over with a 20-7 lead, 5.58 to go in the third quarter. Okay. It looks like the Rams are rushing to the line, ready to go. Man, we've seen that tonight. They seem ready to get on the field offensively every time they get the ball. They're they're ready. So we'll see if they respond to to the excitement. If they can meet that energy with energy that's being brought to them by the Knights right now. Four wide receivers. Carlson gives for Reyes, and he's able to pick up a little bit more than five on the play. He's got such a quick burst through that hole. He is so quick. He is so quick. And he has a, and he runs with a lot of energy. You know, I mean even once he's tackled, he pops up like immediately. <laughs> it's just so Oh. Only comparison I can think of is Darren Sproles back in the oh, day. Gosh. <laughs> That's high praise. That's high praise. He was but, what, maybe five five, five yeah. six? And Darren, Darren, whenever you gave Darren Sproles the ball, either you handed it to him or you tossed it to him, he was a threat to go. <laughs> he was a threat to go to the house. See if Reyes makes that kind of play in the second half. Second down and five. They give to him once again. Nice cut. Makes a cut on there the near sideline, and he may be gone. One man to beat, and he's brought down inside the 25-yard line. No sooner than you said it, he responded. <laughs> Finally had the room and brings it inside the 25, completely flips the field. Which is shown to be extremely important in this game. 20 to seven lead for the Rams and their longest offensive play of the night. First and 10 from the 24. Uh -oh. Give to Reyes again. He bobbled it a bit, but he still has some yeah, room nice before he's brought down by Ayibi. Reyes on the carry. Excellent play by Ayibi. Because Reyes, had he gotten the edge, he's shown he has the ability to go to the house. And so that could have been a touchdown saving tackle. Surprised he had much left in the tank after that long run, but he's right back out there. Now he's full of energy. <laughs> They're it, feeding him the ball right now. It's amazing how much energy a player will have after they make a good play. <laughs> Second and seven for the Rams. They fake to Reyes. Carlson keeps himself and Ooh, picks up a few yards. It looks like it's about three yards short of the first down. Gain of four on the play, third down. A huge third and three, but 
20 to 7 lead. You have to think, Terry, two down territory for the Rams. Definitely two down territory. Field uh, goal doesn't do you too much good. Might as nah. well go for the touchdown. I mean, you take the touchdown. It puts the pressure back, right back on the other team. Carlson looking to pass, throws right side, and it's caught. Eli Gillette picks up the first down inside the 10-yard line, first and goal for the Rams. It was. That was, that was a big play. They needed that first down, you know. I mean, it seems like they have a good kicking game, and they probably could have went for a field goal, but a touchdown would be most, much more helpful to them at this point. Here comes Matty Jens, and we saw Grays Lake Central go to this. They're going to more of that kind of the flex bone look. They got two uh, slot backs, and then Matty Jens, the lone tailback behind Carlson. This is the old double wing offense. This is the offense that uh, Coach Perlman was known for when he was at Prospect winning the three championships. And Jens brings it inside the five. Just a battering ram at fullback. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did when he won the three, the three championships. They'd line up in this. It features like a fullback you can hand the ball to, but either one of the backs can go in motion. As they go in motion, you have opportunity to run a jet sweep either way or a counter play. Yeah, Colton Ohm and Alex Carter. Those are the two wing backs. And then Jens behind Carlson. They give okay, a pitch man. to Ohm Sweet. and he is into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. It's 26 to seven central. There you go. It is. It's one of the few offenses that a high school would use today that utilizes a fullback. You know, of which Matty Jens is a good fullback. <laughs> so, so you get a good fullback, you get a couple wings that are usually speedsters, and then that gives you the opportunity to run that sweep as they did in that case, and get the touchdown. Yeah, you have to think after that last run by Jens as the extra point is good. You're crashing the middle, and that left that toss wide open. It did. It did. Because and that's that's the uh, the philosophy behind that offense. You try to draw everybody into the middle, and then you just try to outrun them to the outside, which is what they were able to do there. And I've seen Coach Perlman run that in the past. And as I said, he won three championships with it. So you win three championships with something you don't get rid of. <laughs> okay. He must have one. the old notebook out there somewhere. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I guarantee he does. When you have a chance to win a game and you've won with this before, you throw it into the mix. <laughs> That's what he did. And we had seen the whole night they were going with the spread, four wide receivers, but they got in the red zone trying to go back up three scores and they went right back to it and it worked like a charm. And it gives it gives him the opportunity to use something he knows works with the personnel that he has, having a person like Manny, uh, excuse me, Matty Jens that can run the fullback for you is the current kind of personnel you need for this. So it was perfect for him. He's on the goal line and it makes it pretty hard for a defense to stop. So back to a 20 point lead for Central as Heijer kicks off, Yevai takes it, and he will be tripped up short of the 30-yard line. So now we get to see if this game goes back to where it was at halftime, or if we still have that level of excitement on the north sideline. If they still have that level of excitement, they can continue to make this a game. If they say, oh my goodness, they scored, it's over, which you can. Hopefully they won't have that attitude. You have to think in a rivalry game, there won't be any quit in the Knights. We hope not. <laughs> Hoping to see a fun finish, but as of right now, a 20 point lead for the Rams. Empty backfield here for Hughes. Ooh. And that one goes off the hands of Bates. Hughes pass falls incomplete. Second down. 
Terry. Cam Bates, you know, I'm not sure if he tweaked something there, but I think also he just seems a little disappointed with himself. I, yeah, I believe it was more disappoint, disappointment than anything else. The other thing that they have to remember to do is the way they scored and the way they got there is that they spread the ball around. So he has to continue to spread, spread the ball around. Hughes needs to continue spreading the ball around, which makes their offense much more effective. They fake to Polium. And a good throw to Eli Wyatt. Good tackle. Tight end who we haven't seen too involved tonight. But Terry, they're spreading the ball around there, getting him involved. Which is very important. As they spread the ball around, it makes them more effective. It makes the defense play the field and not play individuals. When you play the field, you everyone has to be focused and everyone has to be prepared to make a play. When you're playing individuals, you got one or two people that are focused on your star and everyone else is kind of just running around. Hopefully something happens for them. So, so this moving the ball around has been effective and they need to continue to do that. Polium behind Hughes in the backfield. Facing nice. pressure and he is brought down and sacked. Cordell Johnson. Terry Cordell Johnson, just a sophomore, 6'1", 245. We hadn't seen him too involved yet, but I think there's a bright future for that young man. Oh, I think so, too. I mean, he's a sophomore. He's starting on varsity as a sophomore. Now, you haven't seen a heck of a lot of plays. And when you're a sophomore, a lot of times you're thinking, okay? When you play on a defensive line, you don't have time to think. You, <laughs> you just have to go get things. Play action fake. Hughes rolls out. Low Ooh. toss is caught by Wyatt, but gain of just two yards. So third, third and 19. Third and a lot. Third down. Wow, it didn't seem like they lost that much on the sack, but obviously they did. Off of that big sack by Cordell Johnson. So third and 19, with about 30 seconds left in the third quarter, Grays Lake North trailing 27-7. I'm going to say this isn't where you would... Chuck it deep, and it's intercepted! Alex Carter makes the pick. The third turnover of the night for Grays Lake North. Alex Carter's had a good night tonight. He's had a good defensive night tonight. I was thinking that you have two plays. I mean, you're down three scores. Why not take the two plays and go something a little safer and shorter and then come back with another safe and shorter play and hopefully get your first down. But they went for everything at once and it didn't quite work out for them at this time. Now you need your defense to respond. And I'd imagine with a 20 point lead, Potentially the last play of the third quarter, we'll be seeing a lot of Romeo Reyes and Matty Jens the rest of the way. I would expect that. I would expect that. There's Alex Carter on the sideline. Great night for the defensive back. A fake there for Reyes. Throw yes, it, and it oh. was nearly intercepted on the other side. Boy, Beckett Doval had a chance there to take it right back. Very much so. A lot of times, sometimes that interception is so easy. You just, I mean, I think you just don't believe it and you can't catch it. Because it was like it was thrown to him, you know. There's Carter on the bench, along with Cordell Johnson. They made the big defensive plays on that drive. So second down and 10 for the Rams. A little bit surprised to see that pass on first down. I am too. I think, it, I think it's a little bit of mixing it up. I mean, because, I mean, knowing Coach Perlman, I could see him going back to the run. See what he does on second and 10. They do indeed go back to the run. Here is Reyes. Reyes cuts to the right side, takes some contact, but doesn't go down to the sideline as he picks up the first down. 
Wait, he's only 5'3", but he was laying the lumber there at the end of that run. Oh, he, he runs hard. <laughs> he runs hard. He's, he's not big in stature, but he's big in attitude, and he runs hard. And he does deliver the blow when he gets to you. First and 10 for the Rams with eight seconds left in the third quarter. This likely will be the last play of the third period. Carlson fakes, he'll keep it himself, runs along the right side. He's got the first down. Another big run and moving the clock, moving the clock and moving the ball. Very important and we have a lead. The end of the third quarter, the North Knights seven, so North that'll do it for the third quarter. Seven. Looked like North was making a comeback early in the frame, but Grays Lake Central on the move. They lead 27-7 as we head to the fourth quarter on the CAC Network. Every goal, every touchdown, a promise, and that promise deserves safeguarding. Introducing draft protection and loss of value insurance. Dream without limits, we've got the coverage. Opalentia, plan your legacy. Call us now at 708-505-9719. About ready to begin the fourth quarter from Grays Lake Central, a 27 to seven lead for the host Rams over the rival Grays Lake North Knights. Well, at this point, uh, the Knights need to make a play or they need the Rams to make a mistake. Romeo Reyes stacked up at the line. Nothing doing on first down. Reyes on the carry, no gain on the play. Second down. If if the Rams can continue to run the ball, although this this play, they didn't get any yardage, but if they can continue to run the ball, basically they ran a play, they got no yardage, and they already burned up 35 seconds. Just <laughs> milking that clock. You know. Happy to do it with a 20-point lead. Without a doubt. Carlson makes an adjustment at the line. Taking his time, hands off to Reyes, Reyes, working along the near side. Not much there, and a flag comes out as Marquez dragged Reyes out of bounds. There is a flag Let's see what they call it. Horse collar. Oh, face me? Personal foul called against the defense. So that'll be a 15 yard penalty on Grays Lake North. It was a horse collar. Which is a huge mistake. That's a huge penalty at this point. As a result of the penalty, it will be another Rams first down. As much as giving the first down to Grays Lake Central hurt, it's more so, okay, that's three more downs to just run time. Just run time. Just run time. Just hand the ball off and run time. We have Matty Jens in the backfield. So we have the big back in the backfield. Jens moves over to the left side of Carlson. They fake the handoff to him. Carlson keeps himself and picks up six yards on the play. Carlson on the quarterback keeper. Game of six on the play. Second down. I mean, they've shown the propensity to give Carlson the ball on the run as uh, more of as a running quarterback. But I don't know if I'm, you know, if I'm a fan of that. You know, he didn't run a heck of a lot in the first half. He seems like a very effective passing quarterback and obviously very valuable to this offense. Well, you also have to be careful with already losing the starting quarterback. You don't want to risk 
anything happening to Carlson either. Give here to Reyes. And he's spun down a little bit past the line. Third down. Reyes on the carry. No gain. Third down. Look to be Ernesto Gonzalez there. Going a little bigger in the line. Uh, taking out a defensive back, put an extra lineman in. Try to respond to the running game. But anytime you do that, you take a little bit of a chance that they're going to pass the ball. And they still have the opportunity to pass the ball because they're inside the 20. So they are running this, this double wing. Back to it. Matty Jens churning his way. And we'll see where they spot him. Looks like he's short. But Terry, I think with the ball inside the 25, might as well go for it on fourth and one. You can go for it. You can go stand on the line. You can see if you can get them to jump and get a first down. And if they don't jump, you can run a play. The ball is spotted at the 20, fourth and one. But the Rams will take their time. Could see Brent Perlman let the play clock wind down and then call a timeout. Yep. Exactly what he did. Timeout is called by the Rams. That's one of those moves as a head coach. Probably not every head coach in the IHSA is doing that, but Brent Perlman, three-time state champion, he knows how to manage the clock in these Managing situations. The important thing is win the game. <laughs> okay, and some people get wrapped up in their offense. Some people get wrapped up in some stats. The only stat that's really important when it's all said and done is the L or the W. So <laughs> win the game. And this is how you win a game when you're in a league. Okay, you burn the clock. When you go back out, you'll have an opportunity to try to get them to jump off sides again. You can run a play, or you can take the field goal. Because he, I do believe they have a field goal kicker that can hit this. And it would give you 30 to 7. Is that insurmountable? Well, you got to give him the ball back again. And he's not, he's not going to throw it to you. <laughs> so, so they do have the offense out there on fourth and one wouldn't be surprised to see them go right back to Jens or that jet sweep was really effective the last time they were in this uh, when they went for the touchdown yep. oh a jump they but he was back. able to get back. He didn't touch anybody. Yeah, it didn't snap the ball. No contact. They give to Jens. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, it'll be close. I think Nothing he got. Too. I think he's short there. Oh, this is a favorable spot. A favorable spot. Oh, a late flag. A lot to be sorted out here. So a personal foul going against Grays Lake Central. They were short of the first down. So you're short of the first down, and then you give Grays Lake North 15 yards on the drive on unsportsmanlike conduct. So Matty Jens is out talking to the referee, trying to figure out what happened. Okay. Now this is an important talk. He wants to know what's happened. The reason he wants to know what's happened is because when they get back to practice, there will be a reminder about this instance. <laughs> and the reason there will be a reminder about this instance because of stuff like this that happens when the game is not a 20-point game. It happens when the game is a seven-point game, the game is a three-point game that can cost you a victory. And so you have to make sure that your players understand that you can't lose your head in this instance. That's a Great insight, Terry. It's almost like Jens is another coach on the field out there. Yeah, I mean, Rams. yeah, I mean, that's his role. You know, he's the defense, the leader of the defense. He contributes on offense. And part of his role is to make sure that people understand what they need to do when they need to do it. 
So North back with the football. Hughes looking oh. deep and over the head of Bates. Mullen in the area. The one thing you learn when you coach, there are very few things more valuable than a good captain. It makes coaching so much easier. <laughs> they take care of most of the problems before you have to take care of them. <laughs> Well, and especially, too, for Brent Perlman as a first-year head coach, even given the resume that Coach Perlman has, the three state championships, he's still adjusting to this program, trying yes. to instill his culture. It helps to have a leader like that on your roster. Yeah, and if you can get that leader to buy in, it goes a long way. Hughes throwing to the right side. Bates makes the catch. He's stacked up quickly by the Leon. Eight of six on the play. Third down. So third and four for the Knights. With just over eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, they trail by 20. Terry, would you expect to start seeing maybe some no huddle here from North? I could see some no huddle. Uh, what they're trying to do, they're trying to throw out routes. Uh, wait till after the play. Hughes throws over the middle, nearly intercepted. But incomplete. Okay, they were looking for out routes earlier, but the adjustment that was made by Central is that they're keeping everyone on the field. So their defensive backs are keeping the receivers on the field as opposed to letting them run an out route. If you can do that, you keep the clock running. And so that forces, that forces North to look into the middle of the field, which are the plays that he's attempting to throw in the middle of the field, which is a much more dangerous pass to make, too. Fourth and four, Hughes over the middle, and it's intercepted. Here's Mullen down the sideline. Mullen at the 25 and brought down at the 20. Sean Mullen making perhaps a game ceiling interception. Throwing the ball down the middle. Anytime you throw it high, the odds of interception goes up about 25%. And he threw the ball down the middle, and he threw it high. Because when you're in the game and you're trying to catch up. And a player is down here for Glaze, Gray's Lake North. And hopefully OK there. It's Caden O'Brien, one of the linemen for the Knights. And we've unfortunately already seen a tough injury tonight with Bryce Carlson going down and hopefully Caden O'Brien's all right. Down over on that far sideline, but you see Sean Mullen who just made that interception and what an interesting background he has. He was a gymnast as a kid. Finished in the top 15 in the country as a 12 year old. Didn't start playing football until his sophomore year. And now all of a sudden, he's one of the leaders of this team, plays both sides of the football, and he comes away with a key pick in a rivalry game. I'm sorry, I can't find his size. How big is he? <laughs> Six foot, 155 pounds, okay, Sean Moore. I have a philosophy of what happened here, okay, an idea. He was probably a fantastic gymnast. Gymnast is about that overall body strength, but it's also about size. Then he gets to the point that he's outgrowing gymnastics. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and once he outgrows gymnastics, he's a, he's a kid that carries a lot of muscle, carries it well. He knows how to handle his body. Football. <laughs> so all you people that are gymnasts, that are outgrowing, outgrowing gymnastics, football's here for you. <laughs> Well, he's also a track star, too. Pole vaulter and the 110-meter oh. hurdles as well. Outstanding pole vaulters. Pole vaulters, a gymnast with a pole. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Reyes up the middle. Oh. Makes a cutback near the 10-yard line, and he's finally brought down Reyes as Carter Barenbaum makes the tackle. Game of nine on the play. Second, the second and one from the 11 for the Rams. Trying to put the final nail in the coffin. Yes, that's what this would be. 
And this will be this will be a big win for them. When you look at it in terms of conference, when you look at it in terms of rivalry, like you check a couple boxes off with this win. A handoff to Reyes. He's got a hole, has the first down near the five yard line. Reyes on the carry, earns himself another hurrying home team. Rams first down. First and goal from the six, but Terry, as you said, this would be a massive win. Grays Lake Central would improve to two and zero in the NLCC, mm -hmm. and those two losses, Bolingbrook and Geneseo, those I mean, are those are two good powerhouses in really the good state programs. of Illinois. You know, those are really good programs, and uh, if you continue winning, you could look at conference championship, and you could look at a, D, a really good seed in the playoffs. Carlson will pass, deflected, oh. and nearly a second chance for Gillette, but incomplete. Carlson's pass falls. Incomplete. Yeah, you could, you could be looking at a really good second seed down. in the playoffs. Because the playoffs is not just how many games you win. It's who your losses are to. And so if you're losing to really good teams, that helps your, your playoff status, and you get a good seed. And both of those two losses, Bolingbrook always with – Division I talent. Geneseo may be the best small school program in the state year yeah. in, year out. And trust me, when they put together those pairings for the playoffs, when they put together those pairings for the playoffs, they know that. They know who you lost to, and they know if it's a quality loss. You know, they also will take into account that you're a young team and you're probably better at the end of the year than you were than you were at the beginning of the year. And so this, this could be one of those wins that catapults your team to a higher level. And last year, Grays Lake Central lost 27-17 to North. Well on their way to avenging that loss tonight and a timeout called by the Rams. Rams call yeah. a timeout. This timeout brought to you by BCU Credit Union. For Grays Lake North, not looking too good tonight, but there were moments in this game terry where they had a chance to really get their way back in this game the third quarter seemed like it all fell apart on that long run by romeo reyes yeah the long run but before that long run there was a penalty i mean the one thing that this game has shown us is those penalties are extremely costly and it was costly to both teams it was costly to uh north early in the game and it came back to bite him again at the end of the third period. And it was costly to Central at the beginning of the second half. That's how, that's how North had the opportunity to get back in the game. And so I'm sure both coaches will remind their teams how important it is to maintain your discipline and play without getting those penalties, especially those personal fouls. Tend to see a few more of those personal fouls in rivalry games like yes, this. You do, because <laughs> the kids know each other. <laughs> and as close as these schools are, they really know it's each just other. Just about a three-minute drive. Third and goal from the seven. Carlson passes over the middle. Caught touchdown. Cole Olson, the fourth touchdown pass of the night for Brady Carlson. His first start as a high school junior could not have gone better. No, I mean, he's played an outstanding game. And on that last pass, he stood in there. He was willing to take the hit if it took that and got rid of the ball. Now, his buddy, Maddie, Maddie Gents, comes across and picks up the defender. So he didn't have to take the hit, but he stood there to take the hit. He's your on for the extra point. Up and good. It's 34 to 7. Grays Lake Central pouring it on now with a couple of touchdowns in this second half. You know, in practice this week, Grays Lake Central wore a t shirt, and the t shirt had OTOG on it. And the OTOG stood for one team, one goal. What do you think that goal might be? I think it's a conference championship. I think at minimum it's a conference championship. Knowing Coach Perlman, he's talking about a state championship. <laughs> In year one? 
It doesn't make a difference. When it comes together, it comes together. <laughs> well, going back to his time at Prospect, that was a losing program for so long. He won a state championship in year three. Pull it together. I'm telling you, when it comes together, it comes together. It is a party at Grays Lake Central. The student section fired up as they're well on their way to a rivalry win. They even have the students on the other side <laughs> dancing with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have some fun with it. What well, else the one thing that, that you get from high school sports? High school sports adds so much enjoyment to high school, you know. Easier to kick off. Yevi takes it. Wow. He's got some blockers. He's made a couple of nice yeah. returns tonight. He's brought down at about the 33 yard line. By number 23, Jordan, I always say the one thing that's really important about high school is to get involved. You can get involved in the band, you can get involved in cheerleading, you can get involved in the sport like football. Because when you leave and you come back 15 years later for that class reunion, you got something to talk about. Okay, <laughs> what are you going to talk about if you didn't do anything? You got to do something. <laughs> Even if it's being just a leader of the student section, oh. anything coming out and. It's all activity. It's the activities that you're involved in. When you're involved in something, you got a lot to talk about. Hughes had some trouble with the snap there. It's picked up by Holium. Well, taking a look at what's coming up for both of these teams, for the Knights, they'll look to bounce back, but not easily. They'll take on Antioch in their next game, one of the powerhouses in this conference. Mm -hmm. But they do have them at home, and then they'll take on Lakes. They'll be at North Chicago, Round Lake, and they round out the season at Wakanda. This is a tough conference. It's a tough conference. The NLCC. It, it's, it's actually a, a fairly even conference. Because in some conferences, you have one or two teams that should win almost every year. Here, you have a lot of teams that are in the hunt every year, which makes it really tough from week to week. You're not guaranteed a victory, you know. And so if you're in that type of conference, your kids got to be ready every week. So third and 16 now for the Knights. Handoff there for Maurice Jordan, and he's brought down by Matty Jens, continuing to add to his lead as the all-time tackler at Grays Lake Central High School. That, that's a heck of a record. It, 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 it's just a heck of a record. Yeah, it's an impressive record for Matty Jens and contributing defensively, offensively. Great night for him. And, and, his, and his role as a leader on the team. You know, the role when he steps up and he talks to his teammates about what we can and cannot do is, I mean, that, that gives you so much value. You don't necessarily see it in tackles. You won't see it in the score, but you will feel it as a team overall when you have a strong leader. Oh. Hughes with the punt and a little slippage there, but harmlessly the punt is down with just under four minutes to go. And a 34 to seven lead for Central as they take over. And a chance here to potentially drain the clock all the way down to zeros. Maybe a chance to get some other players into the game. Yeah, at this point, you get those players in the game. If you have something that happens and you have to play second team players, this is where they get that experience. You know, I'm sure this is where Brady Carlson got experience last year and last week. Rams and that turned into him to be a highly successful starter tonight.
Well, it looks like a new quarterback will be taking over with the big lead for the Rams, JT Pappen, number 30, who has just moved up from the sophomore team this week. I'd imagine due to the injury to Cole Gillette, he's yeah. now the backup quarterback and will get a chance to get some reps in live game action. And which will be fantastic for him to get that live game action. But also, this is the opportunity for him to learn from somebody that learn to put that work in and prepare themselves like like Brady Carlson, you know? I mean, at any time, he could be called upon. And so now he has to put that work in on a daily basis and become prepared to take over the helm. Well, Terry, you probably know it well from your playing career, coaching career, is you have to have that depth at quarterback I mean, really at every position, but at quarterback, you've got to be ready to go as the backup. And Carlson proved that tonight, and Pappen now will get a chance to take some snaps. Marion Williams in the game at running back as well. And Pappen is going to run with it. And a nice first play at the varsity level. He picks up a first down. Picks up first down, stuck his nose in there. He wouldn't try to run out of bounds. <laughs> Comes back for holding. That's too bad for Pappen there. That kind of happens when you replace everybody, too. <laughs> I mean, but it's because everyone's trying to make a play. You get in the game. You get in the game. You might not have been in the game tonight. You're trying to make a play. And that's really... That's really what's expected of you to make a play. It's not expected of you to get a penalty, but to make a play is what's expected. It remains first down. So it'll be first and 20 now for the Rams. Lead 34 to seven. What a performance by Grays Lake Central in this rivalry game. Well, they call the same play and have been able to pick up close to 10 yeah, yards. Another 10 yards. I didn't cut that, count that first 10 for him. <laughs> <laughs> Those penalties got to take those yards away. So the student section at Grays Lake Central doing the I believe that we will win chant, and they're well on their way to the win. Yes, they are. Now Pappen will run on the other side Whoa. and is dragged down in the backfield. Nice shot by Connor Vargo making the play there for Grays Lake North. And I mean, basically, this is an opportunity for people that haven't played very much tonight on both teams to get a chance to get out and actually show their wares and play against your cross-town rival because it's hard to talk about it and, you know, when you're all hanging out at the – the high school party if you didn't play. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, get the rare chance to brag about it at school tomorrow. That, with it oh, being that's a true. Thursday night game. That's true. <laughs> Silly me, I forgot it was Thursday. <laughs> Usually have to wait till Monday, but Have not in this instance. Keeper. That is very true. Happen did pick up the first down there. He's looked impressive and yes. Clock continues to run. I'd like to take a moment with about two minutes left just to thank you to our crew. We still have a post-game wrap-up to go, but to our producer, Casey Sellers, assistant producer, Don Johnson, our director, Greg Rosso, technical director, Dan Huser, audio engineer, Dan Lee, camera operators, Greg Joyner and Fernando Guerron, and also Matt Wolfukel. And uh, Terry, of course, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you tonight. Well, thank you very much, Connor. And once again, it, it's always exciting to come off of high school football. And it was even more exciting because it was fun to have met you tonight and to be able to bask in your expertise. No, oh, <laughs> far from it, no. <laughs> No, really enjoyed uh, getting the chance to work with you and also hear about your Dennis Green story. That was that was pretty interesting. Well, Denny and I, we went way back. <laughs> we went way back.
Well, you can crown Grays Lake Central as the champions of the battle for Grays Lake. This is true. Final minute winding down. And the people on the, the Grays Lake North side said that's what next year is for. Absolutely. They got the win last that year, but nice here's one more. Damari and Williams taking it to the end zone, but a flag is down. That's too bad for Damari and Williams. Couple holding flags on this last drive of the ball game. Well, one thing I will say, it didn't take away from his run. It was an outstanding run. I mean, uh, he got to the edge. He outran the entire defense to the other end of the field. Okay, there was a holding. Okay, and he's not gonna get credit for the yards. But his effort was there, and he obviously knew what he was doing. That's valuable experience for him moving forward. Yeah, it's been impressive to see how Williams and Pappen have come in and had this opportunity to show what they can do, and they've impressed. Yes. And that's how you build the young ones, so you can string together those wins <laughs> and one day get that one goal, state championship. And now it looks like, not sure if this is the double wing or the victory formation here. It looks like probably just victory formation. Victory JT time. Pappen will take the knee. They might need to run one more, but we'll see if the officials let that be the final play of the ball game. We'll probably take one more knee. Play it again. Okay. Fantastic. Pappen will take one more knee, and Grays Lake Central with a dominant 34 to 7 victory over Grays Lake North in this rivalry game. The Rams improved to two and two, but more importantly, two and zero in NLCC play and Terry what a performance from start to finish but Brady Carlson his first career start four touchdowns four touchdown passes uh, a little bit for the entire family three to his brother but once his brother went out of the game he continued to play excellent and he can put, continue to put the ball right on the receivers which is why he was so successful today so he put a lot of work into preparing himself, and he came out tonight and performed. Fantastic performance by Carlson. Maddie Jens as well, setting the all-time tackle leader record. And we'll get a chance to talk to both of them after this. Grace Lake Central wins it 34-7. We've got more coming up on the CAC Network. Every goal, every touchdown, a promise, and that promise deserves safeguarding. Introducing draft protection and loss of value insurance. Dream without limits, we've got the coverage. Opalentia, plan your legacy. Call us now at 708-505-9719. And I'm here with our two players of the game, Matty Jens and Brady Carlson. Now, first and foremost, let's talk a little bit to Maddie. Maddie set a record tonight for the most career tackles in school history. W Maddie, tell us how did that happen? Uh, you know, my, my freshman year was the COVID year, and we had a little tough, uh, tough season. We only had played five games. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I played my brother that year, and some of his buddies, and they, they whooped my butt at linebacker. So I kind of had high standards, and you know, I wouldn't mess up because I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get that, I didn't want to get. I, I didn't want to get that beat down, so uh, you know, and then it, it kind of just stuck with me, and and uh, and and that's about it. So you know, I just you know, I held myself to high standards, and I know these guys held me to those uh, standards as well. So I don't want to uh, let them down, and that's what I do it for. So thank that, you that, very much. That's why. And you also showed yourself to be a leader on the field. Yes, sir. I mean, you talked to your talked to your teammates when things went wrong, kind of kept them going in the right direction. Yes, sir. And so you're really valuable to your team. And you're one of our most valuable players tonight. And then also, Brady Carlson. Brady started his first game tonight as a junior 
and he played like a seasoned veteran with four touchdown passes, three of those to his brother. So, Brady, tell us a little bit about your experience this evening. Well, it was in, first of all, it's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to be starting for this program. A lot of hard work has gone into this season, especially over the offseason. This game was not won tonight, in my opinion. It was won in the offseason in the winter with all the hours we put in. Not only me and Bryce, my brother, but everybody else, and all of these guys too. Countless hours have been put in, and I'm really proud that our hard work finally paid off tonight. Okay, thank you very much. You were outstanding tonight, and you showed the work that you put in when you weren't a starter. A lot of people just go and sit down on the side and sulk when they're not a starter. They don't prepare themselves to be a leader and a champion on the day it's, it comes about. But you were, and you stepped up, and you're one of our most valuable players. So thank you very much. Post game at Grays Lake Central High School, where the host Rams are 34 to 7 winners over their crosstown rivals, Grays Lake North, alongside Terry Harrell. Connor Klingen here with you. And Terry, what a performance by Brady Carlson tonight. Four touchdowns in his first varsity start. Have you seen in your career a player? have that kind of performance in their first start at this level? Actually, no, I haven't. What it did show is that he put a lot of work in preparing himself for this opportunity. You can't get ready when it's time to go. You have to be ready when it's time to go, and he was ready tonight. Well, Terry, you mentioned to me before the game, you had 45 sacks in high school. I assume that's a record at Beloit High School. Maddie Jen set a record tonight for the most tackles in the history of Graves Lake Central High School. What do those kind of milestones mean to someone as a player? Well, when you're a player, you don't even realize it's happening when it's happening. You don't realize it's happening until it's over with. It's not really that important to you when you're a player. When it's important to you is later in life. And so later in life, you'll always remember this night. Great moment for Maddie Jens, breaking a record that dates all the way back to 1976. So, Terry, last question here before we wrap this up. Grays Lake Central with a great win tonight. They're 2-0 in conference play. Where, what do you see as the ceiling for this team the rest of the way? I mean, this team is going to have some very competitive games coming up, like with Grant, and they'll have the opportunity to win this conference. They did a fantastic job tonight. And they show that they have a lot of young people that have developed and are ready to go. A massive win for the Grays Lake Central Rams over their rivals, the Grays Lake North Knights, on their home field. A great crowd, a great environment. We had a lot of fun tonight. For Terry Harrell, I'm Connor Klingen saying so long from Grays Lake Central. Once again, your final score, the Rams win it 34-7 over Grays Lake North. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight on the CAC Network.